Good morning, everybody. You beautiful people, you. It's your boy, Nushi. Roushi, where you at? What it do? What it do with it? It's Tuesday, September the 13th. We got a glorious podcast ready for y'all. The incredible story of Mike Ross that's going to take you down a path of gaming like you've never seen before. Street Fighter legend. It's wild. Shout out to E. Honda. And you know what? Thank you to everybody that's been with us for this glorious week. We dropped Nolan and Drama last week. We've gotten some incredible feedback. Love to hear what everybody thinks about it. Love the fact that we get to even give you guys these stories. And shout out to Drama and Nolan for blessing us with their time and, yeah. and coming and telling and sharing these stories. Super grateful, you know man. Saying? Thank you guys for coming on and thank all you guys for listening. Uh, we appreciate it. It's been a strong first week. Yeah. We can't get, wait to get into week two. Yeah, let's week go. Week three coming. Week four. Uh, week five. It's never tell ending. Em. It's tell never em. ending. So what you got to do, what you got to do is subscribe. Okay. You got to rate it. Give us five stars. Whew. Drop a little comment. Drop a little review. Please drop a comment. Drop a little hashtag. Talk to us. Nushi, get on the mic. Let's I'm make on that, the mic. Let's make that a this real is thing. Mr. Stay on the mic over here. That's right. But no, we super appreciate you guys. Can't wait to get into this episode. Nushi, tell him. Ah. Uh, Mama. Mama. We, we made it. it. What it, what it do now? Hey, 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 hey. let's go. Let's get it. I'm gonna, be on, I'm gonna be on the mic the whole fucking time. Tonight. That's right. That's right. You better Ladies it. and gentlemen, welcome to Mama. We made it. We have a very special guest in the building. Do we now? You may know him uh-huh. as a legend in the Street Fighter Four world. Who may be playing with? Mr. Edmund Honda. Uh oh. You Uh-oh. may even know him from Excellent Adventures. The excellent. Shout out to Gutex. Gutex, baby. I knew him as a little pipsqueak. Okay. About ten years ago. You're an asshole for that. Give it up to the legendary Mike, Mike Ross. Ross. Round of applause. Round of applause. Round of applause. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, man. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. That was Dude. quite an introduction. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It, it's it's Anusha's loud voice. Yeah, I'm a fucking, I, I scream. I don't know. But see, the thing is, is like, if I try and tone it down, people will be like, bro, like, stop trying to be like midnight love on a motherfucker. You know what I mean? So I have to, it's either scream or dead sexy. I'll keep it at the scream for right now until I find the balance. He's like a good radio host for like smooth jazz. Hey. No, no. Mike Ross. How? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, so I'm just going to get right into it. So, Mike, dude, I, I love your story. Um, I've been honored to, to see this journey unfold. Mm. Now, I know your brother. I know your brother, John Ross. John and I used to uh, work together. And uh, then he was talking about his little brother, Mike. <laughs> little brother, Mike, plays Street Fighter. <laughs> What is it, you know, in, in terms of being a gamer, like, you know, the industry as it is now, it's so crazy, dude. It's just, it's blown up. But let, let's go back for a second and talk about for where it began for you. Where it began. Because I'm not even, not, not talking like necessarily a kid. We all, like, as a kid, we right. all played. Of course. But where did your really transition into being a gamer happen? You know, even going back to, to being a skateboarder, bro. Oh, man. Okay, well. First off, it's kind of funny with the going back to the beginning. You said not as a kid, oh, yeah. but I do have a kind of a funny story. Let's go it. Yeah, let's, let's go. take it there. That I haven't shared, and I don't know if I should share it. Share it. <laughs> let's take it there, oh, bro. Let's share it. Here's a why. <laughs> it's because you worked with my brother, uh, and he can vouch for this, so he kind of knows. It's kind of funny. Is I just remember, is he going to do a fucking Facebook expose about <laughs> this? Is, gonna, is he going to come out out of the interwebs with this one? Yeah, I just remember it had to have been what, like maybe 1990. Okay. Long time wow, ago. Okay. I was a kid. I was a little kid, a couple of years old. So I don't know, maybe seven, something like that. Um, or maybe eight. it doesn't matter. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was still in my huggies. So, <laughs> uh, and I just remember, like you know, I always wanted to to go outside in the street, play football, play something, yeah, play basketball, play something, whatever, right? You know, I wasn't as big as everybody else. Still not. 
Um, so I actually really enjoy just playing games <laughs> in the house. Word. Uh, I still did both. You know, if you wanted to play, I'll try to do it. But there was some, there was one particular day where I was just I was too tired. I was so mad. I was just like, nah, I just want to play this game. This is it. Yeah. And then he he lashed out at me as brothers should do. By yeah. the way, if you like, you should. John is the swollest dude ever. <laughs> like he he stays he stays swole. Like he he's a big brother. Emphasis yeah. on big. Yes. <laughs> like, but that's, but that's good. That's why I have so little fear of people. <laughs> like, yeah. That's like the, my own brother. I yeah. tell you. Yeah. If I can stand up to him, I mean, come on. Now. And he, yeah. nobody yeah. nobody comes close. Yeah, exactly. Dude, I was intimidated. I was like, oh geez, I gotta work with this. Yeah. <laughs> and, but he's like a big teddy bear but yeah, go on yeah. go on yeah so and i just remember yeah he he yelled at me like you know you staying in the house all day like you sissy and all kind of name calling just That's this right. and i just remember yelling back at him at like seven years old i said well one day i'm gonna make money playing video games no <laughs> you know and i'm not gonna give you anything when i do really? <laughs> I was mad. yeah i was mad and he was nice to me immediately after that because <laughs> yeah. i don't know why <laughs> And then, you know, when you say that when you're young, you have no idea what you're saying. I'm just like, how can I strike back and make them mad or whatever? And yeah. So, Which is wild. Yeah. You know, we were talking because when I was young and playing video games and News 2, I never thought, like, yeah. I can make money doing this. Yeah. It was just, like, for fun. Yeah. I, I didn't know either. I just said it. That's I just wild. said one day. That's I'm gonna wild. Do it. <laughs> and then, uh, I don't know. That's something that just stays in the back of my head. And it's, it's just crazy to me that who would have seen that coming? That's yeah. epic. Who could have seen that coming, right? That's epic. Yeah. yeah. So that's that kind of cool. But of course, you know, that I did not uphold that latter half of saying I wouldn't do anything for him. That's yeah. Like, yeah. I feel I'd you. The, 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 the brotherly love yep. came Yeah, in. I'll give him the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, totally. It's crazy. So, and that's coming as a kid. So when you actually became, um, actually when you started that journey of doing this professionally, yeah. um, what was the first moment or the first, um, step into that world what was really the, the the game changer into that so i mean you know i guess you can say there's two pivotal points one being um shortly after that i had to have been i don't know they did a blockbuster video did, if you guys wow, remember that company <laughs> yeah. Dude, blockbuster. I'm, i may even have my blockbuster card <laughs> still in my wallet <laughs> you, you know what's ingrained for me about blockbuster is every time i turn in a movie late and we go to re-rent a movie <laughs> my dad would be arguing with the fucking people getting a refund like what do you mean late what do you mean if it's just late get out of here it's not late me. like every it'd be a scene at fucking blockbuster yeah <laughs> shout out to blockbuster I mean, there's the reason there was a scene. Late fees were like twelve ninety nine. Yeah, it was insane. One day, yeah. Got it twelve minutes late. They could literally bring a fucking video of, yeah. of us turning in a video two weeks later, yeah. and my dad would be like, "That's not me. I don't know who that is. I don't know what what's going on. No. Get where's your manager, sir? I'm the manager. Where's the CEO of the company? You know what I'm saying? Out of nowhere. Oh, that is doctored footage. <laughs> that is great. So Blockbuster. Yeah, you so, brought it all the way back. Yeah, because they had a... Um, this is also weird to me. They had a tournament. They okay. had, they had a, a Blockbuster video game tournament. And I had gone there one day and my mom saw it. Really? And something I never thought I would hear from her was she was like, you should enter. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? Like, that's weird. Like, you know, you guys don't ever encourage. Like, how, 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 yeah. how old were you during uh, this I time? I had been like eight or nine. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, and she was encouraging it. And that was the craziest thing in the world to me. It didn't make any sense. I'm that's like, wild. Like, this, parents don't encourage kids to play video games. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, then. Um, so I just remembered she, I entered. They told us what games were going to be there. She rented all the games for me. I practiced. Uh, my very first turn, I think I got like second place or something like nice. that overall against wow. kids, like twice my age. So it was kind of fun then. Uh, I didn't realize that that wasn't going to be the last and only time I would ever compete in a video game, right? That's incredible, um, bro. You know, fast forward to high school or, you know, Street Fighter. It's a game that everybody plays. Street Fighter 2. Yeah, Street Fighter, yeah. Now, um, who, are you, who are you playing with at that time? So... So Street Fighter, when it first came out, I guess I could say I was was playing everybody, but I wasn't any good okay. because I wasn't playing on a competitive level. I'm a, you know, I'm a yeah. kid playing the game, essentially. Doing, yeah. some, doing some Hadoukens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But then in 2000, 
there was a game that came out called Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Oh, yes. in the arcade style? Yes, in the oh, arcades. That was, I remember that. Cats that were fucking good at that, that was that, Oh, my God. Yeah. I, get, I used to play that at, at UCLA, had mm. an arcade. Did you, did you know that one? I would drive out here to play with all you, those guys. Yeah, you, pay, you paid like seven bucks or nine yeah. bucks, and you get the four <laughs> yeah. hours for free? Yeah. That's insane. Dude, I might have even played again. No, you yeah, you're no, too no. young. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that game was so good, man. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, my God. I love that game. Yeah. I was always really shitty at that game. Like, I was playing NBA Jam. Oh, like, nice, shit, nice. But like, I was horrible at NBA, uh, yeah. Marvel vs. Capcom. Yeah. Horrible. <laughs> but but enough about me. <laughs> <laughs> and then? Yeah. <laughs> so, well, when that game came out, um, you know, I had played it. It was across the street from my high school at a place called Video 94. So whenever I would walk home from school, I would just stop there first. You know, Damn. naturally back then you save your lunch money. Yeah. You skip a meal. Yeah. You save it to go play afterwards, right? Yeah. And I would play there. Um, I felt like I was really bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and one day I went to an arcade, and there was some there was some dude there. <laughs> so kind of let's describe him. Like, this, 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 yeah. uh, you know, dude, gangster why dude. do the gangsters always hang out at arcades? You know, <laughs> that's, that's that stigma. Yeah. <laughs> that stigma. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, I showed up, I drove there on myself, and I played, and I lost. I was terrible, like I said. And then this fool's friend came, and when his friend showed up, his friend came and said, hey, yo, like, how you do? You know, and the, that guy was like, oh, man, you know, this, he, and he just started going around the arcade pointing. Yeah, I beat this fool. This fool sucks. This fool sucks. In a super gangster tone, This fool tone too, sucks. Huh? And then I'm looking. Yeah. I was like, this guy better not point. This fool sucks. <laughs> oh, and I was wow. like, I said, oh, my God. Like, that was like the worst I had ever felt. <laughs> like, I could have I could have flunked anything in class. <laughs> the gangster in the <laughs> yeah. arcade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like Went the straight fact, at yeah. you. And he was going down the assembly line. And wow. I was like, please no. no. Because I thought I put up a good fight even yeah. though I lost. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that he said that. And I got so mad internally. I said, I'm never going to let this happen again. Like, because oh, I know that wow. fool was bad. I said, I need, I, need to, I need to figure this out. Like, I need to work. Did I drop a combo? Like, I was going through my head. Like, what did I do wrong? I, I got to fix everything. So I went, you know, and I started saying, I'm going to get really good at this game. How well, how old were you at this point? Seventeen. Okay. It's probably seventeen. Okay. Um, yeah. So I said I'm gonna get really good at this. Is game. Is that like a late bloom in the gaming world? So Ooh. in the community that I'm a part of, I think the fighting game community. No. Okay. The reason why is because fighting games existed. You know, back in the early '90s, who were playing them? People that could afford to go to arcades, high schoolers, mm, people after it, that. You know, that's the it, early '90s. It. Okay. So technically, when I came came into the game, I was a young cat. Got it. Got <laughs> I was it. a young cat at 17. Okay. All the legends were 22. Word. Uh, some, like the oldest, maybe 25, 26. Okay. okay. Um, so when I, you know, I decided to practice the game up, uh, I got really good. I, I would go back to Video 94 across the street from my high school to the point where some dude said, oh, man, you're pretty good. You should go to this other place. You know, that's in um, Santa Ana, Southern Hills Golf Land. It's where all the best players play. Wow. And then so I'm like, is that a miniature golf spot? Yeah. (laughs) Why does this feel like a Karate Kid movie? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So you know, and like anything, whatever, whatever craft you're doing, generally, no matter what it is, I don't care if it's music, I don't care if it's games, you have a click, right? Everybody's got a circle. So you know, when I heard about that, I talked to them about it. And they were like, oh, yeah, you didn't know about this? <laughs> I'm like, no, y'all didn't tell me nothing. Like, you guys are holding all this information back against me. It's like they didn't want me to be good. Oh, <laughs> they, wow. they didn't want me to be good. They withheld information. They were trying to play you. They were sabotaging me. Anyways, I found out. Ha ha, too bad. So, so now, so yeah, so, so then I go down there. I, I, we, we, I found out there's a tournament. Okay. And at the time, this is like, you got to hear it. From a gamer's perspective, this is what they're selling me on. They're like, oh, you got to go there. Five Marvel machines, all of the best players like in the like Southern California go. Fools drive from San Diego, some fools would drive from Seattle oh, to come shit. down. Like it was pretty big, and we would get a lot of people showing up. 128. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like back then, you're yeah. like, what? You That's go to huge. an arcade, there's three or four people playing one game, yeah. maybe. Yeah. yeah. You go here and you see 128 people. That's you're insane. Like, That's wow. insane That's to insane. me. That's insane. That's wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, here I am. I'm the scrub. I'm the new kid. They don't know me. So when you sign up for a tournament and they don't know who you are, they're like, all right, well, we'll put him against our number one player yeah. because he's not going to get far. Yeah. So they put me against the champion at the time. Mm-hmm. His name was Duck Doe. Um, 
and he had traveled to Japan. You know, these guys are legends. Yeah. And they put me up against him first round, this kid. So people, when those matches happen, they don't really care to watch because they know he's just going to yeah. lose. Yeah. And I beat him the first game. No way. Oh, wow. <laughs> I took one game off of him because he underestimated me. Yeah. yeah. So then when that happened, I'm sitting on a stool. We're side by side in an arcade, you know, and all these. Yeah. I've never played with 100 people watching behind me. Yeah. So when I see that and, I, and the crowd erupted, oh, you know, when I beat wow. this in this small room. And you, you know, you, you don't look at your opponent, but you see at the shoulder of his eyes, you see him go yeah. <laughs> like this. Okay. Shake, yeah. shake the you head. Know? Just like, all right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> right. So when that happens, my leg is visibly shaking. Like I'm nervous. I'm, I can't been, even. He's yeah, been there like, before. Yeah, exactly. I haven't. <laughs> so I'm like, what do I do? Like, this is crazy. Yeah. Th that adrenaline. Uh, yeah. Whooped me. Destroyed me the next two games. Okay. Everybody afterwards said, man, good, good job, kid. <laughs> you know, like it's pretty good. Yeah. That was, that's, that was love at first sight. Wow. Word. And I said, this is. I want to come next month. <laughs> oh, that's you know, wild. So you had a moment that like catapulted you into gaming yeah. by being just like thrown into an abyss of just like, yeah. you suck. Yes. Right? Yeah. And then you come, you're, you're gaming, you're getting better. You're, ne that, you're never going to mm -hmm. feel that again. Right. So you practice, practice, practice. Mm -hmm. you, this gaming culture is around you. Yes. Then you go to this, this hot spot. Right. That your boys were like trying to keep away from you, mm -hmm. the majestic exactly. spot that yep. they're trying to keep away from them yep. for, for how long? Yep. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. You go there, mm -hmm. you're put up against the best cat, mm -hmm. you lose, but you mm -hmm. taste, yeah, I taste what them. it feels like yes. to do something special. Best feeling and ever. You never wanna, yeah. And you never want to, and you yep. and you want to come back. Correct. And it's one that, of the best feelings ever. That's mm -hmm. insane. Is that when you first start, like really started? to uh, hit the practicing like hours and yeah. hours and hours. And yeah, so after that, I mean, like, you know, this is things, I mean, you don't have to play the game, but you guys can understand that, you know, in a game, there might be a combo, right? Mm -hmm. A character can do a combo. Mm -hmm. So back then, I remember there were a couple days when I would spend eight hours practicing one single combo really? over and over and over. And the problem was, is I couldn't get it. <laughs> That's why I had to practice really? it. Really? Yeah, eight hours, one day. You know what it's like to get home at 2 p.m. from Fuck. school, and the next time you check the clock, it's 10.30, and you've been doing one combo, and you're just like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, I need to go eat. <laughs> what, what system did you play on? So for Marvel 2, and around this time, I was playing on Dreamcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, so it, it, that's, that's, yeah, like I said, once I got bit by that bug, it was yeah. practice, practice. It was checking who's the best in the community, what, mm -hmm. trying to find their videos, see what they're doing, go back to practice, practice, call my friends over, the click, say, hey guys, let's play, you know, lose to them, whatever. I would never beat people in, in, pra when I was practicing for some reason. I was a terrible player in practice. Really? Once tournament comes, um, it's a different What do you beast. think that was? Uh, me willing to experiment all the got time. Got it. And then in got tournament, it. I'm like, okay, yeah. got it. <laughs> now it's then time. Then you hold it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's so interesting. It's like uh, taking that first step into being a professional was mm -hmm. really started there in the tournaments because most of us were just like playing games at home. Yeah, yeah. called our yeah. friends yeah. over. Mm -hmm. Like, you know. I would never yeah. even think to be like right. uh, in, a, in a tournament or enter a tournament. I always felt I was really good too. Yeah. I always felt like, <laughs> right. I was, you know, but you just, uh, on that level, it's so yeah. interesting that you took it there. Yeah. Um, and it probably just helped from the 128 people and the adrenaline and all that. Yeah. It's interesting. It's kind of finding your home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess the same thing like goes for music. Like yeah. uh, people get in music, you just kind of start out by playing your instrument because it's yep. fun. You're playing some songs. Yep. You join a band, kind of your click. Then you do a show, and you're like, "Ooh, I like it. I like the way this yeah. feels." Ooh, right? Okay. It's now crazy. I'm gonna start taking this seriously. Yeah, okay. Uh, I want to be on. You know. And it's crazy with like even like performers or anybody like in the, in that kind of stage mm -hmm. when you know a big part of that story is somebody telling them they'll never make it. Yeah. Right. Or somebody <laughs> telling them that you're you suck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's a few that use that to rise to the occasion. Mm -hmm. Some guys just take it and be like, "Well, fuck you, anyways. Like yeah. you don't know me." Right, right, right. But mm -hmm. for you, somehow that like really hits you, and it just like threw you into that realm. That's crazy. It's, I to mean, me. you know, like you. When you really care about something, like I didn't know how much I cared about it at the time. Yeah. Obviously, right. But just. Yeah, this is just the last thing I wanted to hear. <laughs> Don't ever tell me something I can't do if I really care about it. Mm. Yeah, so. Did you go to college? Yes. What I college? went to uh, Cal State Los Angeles. Okay. And I majored in uh, television and film. Uh, that's yeah. right, because that's uh, where 
that's where we saw focus. Is that Cal State LA? No, no, no. no it was, no, no, was, was near that, you. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It's a different how, how was that for you balancing school yeah. and, and like low key going into adulthood and you're like on a, a video game? Well, thinking about yeah, a professional video game, uh, a hunt. I mean, how, like, how, yeah. because like I, I get what it. What was your major, bro? <laughs> 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 what are you going to be like, when you grow yeah. up? <laughs> yeah. Because it, it, it's wild for me because, you know, I guess now the, the whole, you know, landscape has changed. Yeah. You got, like, kids playing online. And, mm-hmm. like, I don't think that was – you didn't have that no, then. Not back but then, But yeah. you have kids playing, like, when they're fucking, like, five, six years old until, like, they're – when they hit, like, eight, nine, they're, like, fucking super Jedi status. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it becomes, like, this road up until – Okay, I'm 18 now. I'm fucking super godly, and we're right. we're taking us there. Yeah. But you started when you were like 17. Yeah. You're getting really good, really good, really good. Then yep. you're in college, but like it's like how for me is like you're hitting the adult line stages. Mm-hmm. Was there any backlash? Like what what did you have to deal with, or was there like super support for you? Um. Yeah. So it was kind of difficult, obviously, and the most difficult part was. Choosing your focus, yeah. choosing your passion at the time, because it's hard to balance both yeah. with anybody. You know, you hear people all the time, whether it be musicians, whatever, you know, mm. they might be on the road. They might be doing stuff. Their school might not be up to par yeah. their schooling or whatever. Um, for me, fortunately, I picked a major that I was really interested in, which what is was it? TV and film, television okay. and film. Um, and the reason why I picked that, just because that stuff naturally interests me. Mm. However, by the time I completed school, I was furious because I said, I majored in something I can't do anything with. Wow. <laughs> you know, right? Like I was, it was bad. I was legit angry. <laughs> yeah, major that in LA. That's not a competitive field. No. Right, right, right. <laughs> Nobody wants to get in TV and film in LA. <laughs> well, was video games competitive at the time? Because going back, I mean, now it's, it is a different beast, yeah. but back then, if you, I mean, it's got to be competitive. Mm-hmm. Right. Or was right. it? I don't know. Right. Uh, yes, no, absolutely. Because like, now I feel like it's insane, but mm-hmm. was it like this back then? Are you then? talking about the gaming? Yeah, the gaming uh, community, like being a professional gamer. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. So, I mean, that was already kind of a thing in Korea. Okay. okay. In Korea, video game players are treated like superstars. They're on the cover of magazines. They're making six-figure uh, paychecks just to be signed and endorsed by teams. And this was back in, you know, early to mid 2000s. Yeah. So this is nothing new to them. Got it. Um, however, like over here, I'm still traveling to tournaments. And by traveling, I don't even want to say like not out of state. No, I couldn't afford the, <laughs> the plane yeah. tickets, you know, but I would travel uh, to San Francisco or, yeah. you know, wherever I could by car. Um, so the tournaments wasn't taking too much of a toll on me, okay. but I was still competing at an event at least every week or every other week. Okay. Um, um, my performance wasn't the best, though, mm. uh, once, once I was focusing more on school because I had to finish that. So I would go to tournaments. I would get, like, uh, maybe top 32 at, at stuff, which, you know, some people might think is good. By the way, I should mention now <laughs> that when I was 17 in that 128-man tournament, by the time, you know, later in college, when I transferred over to Cal State Los Angeles, mm-hmm. the tournaments I was entering now, we're up to 400, 500 people. Oh, Got wow. it. So, and so that's top in, 32, yeah. That's, yeah, that's in the growth of about, I don't know, five, four or five years. Yeah. Okay. And just to kind of put into some context, you know, uh, last... And this is just localized. This is... No, these are actually one of the bigger tournaments. Okay. The, the biggest tournament at the time uh, around this was getting about 1,000 to 2,000 people Got in it. attendance, wow. 2,000 attendees maybe. So that is big. Yeah. It's fucking wild. And just you know, just to put on your radar, 2015, the last Evolution tournament, our biggest fighting game tournament was over 15,000 people in attendance. That's insane. That growth is nuts. That's <laughs> but it, it, but wild. You, you were, I mean, it, that's crazy to go from 128 to now, the level of where it's at. That's why I ask is, you know, you, you say you majored in TV and film, right? Mm-hmm. And college is the time where you're supposed to think about your career. Yep. You're supposed to make all these huge life decisions yeah. by book, right? You're yeah. su- that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Stability. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So TV like, and film yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Are being brought yeah, yeah, yeah. into play. All yeah. these scares. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, all these and threats. It's like TV <laughs> and film. LA, like it sounds good, and but yeah, it's crazy competitive. Mm-hmm. 
But then you're like, instead, I'm going to be a gamer. Yeah. <laughs> and so, it's like, so, bro, right. you're not like, what? Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so that's the crazy part, right? Yeah. It's like, you can on the surface say that, that that's what it is that I'm doing, but I didn't even realize it, but I'm doing everything I learned in school and in my major. Mm. You know, Talk like to you, us about that. You mentioned Excellent Adventures. Yeah. It's content that we produce. You know, um, I learned a lot of on-screen camera training and stuff like that mm. through classes, studying framing. So even when I'm doing projects, um, it's just knowing it's how to te- it's, it's knowing how to tell that story to people. Got it. And I think you know a lot of people don't know that that's because they didn't learn it in school. So and <laughs> I'm like one end, you know, I'm throwing stuff on the wall saying that I, I majored in something useless, and you know now looking through that rearview mirror, I'm like that was the only thing I could have done because I'm using it every day. Epic. And I don't, yeah, like so. Yeah, what I wanted to do is I wanted to entertain people. Got mm-hmm. it. Gaming is that the outlet to entertain people. So. Got it. Did you always feel like it was the outlet to entertain people? Yeah. Uh, so the reason I, I guess so. Yeah. I yeah. guess I mean w- when you got the crowd behind you and you feel yeah. that bug, that's probably was part of it. The reason being is you know. Being going back to when I was 17 and seeing that crowd, not being a TV film major, but what I did see, I was like, this is one of the most entertaining communities I've ever been a part of. Why? Got because you. when you think of gamers, everybody has a stereotype in their head. Yeah. They have the basement dweller, they have the nerd, they have the people who are afraid of women and can't talk to them. And then, you know, when I went to my first event and I looked at, around at some of these people, I was like, it's not actually, you know, the case. You know, there's a lot of people here that have so much charisma. You know, they're bringing their hot girl, you know, whatever it is, right? Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is actually, huh? <laughs> this is. These are just. I can. I can. I can. Nerds. Yeah, I can be here. Nerds. I'm the dude in the back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing me back down to hey, me. Nerds. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, sometimes I do that. Sometimes I leave. <laughs> I was on the fifth floor. Yeah. Right Sorry, I was up there going with him too. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> There's an asshole in the background. <laughs> Yanked me all the way the fuck down. Yeah. No, but um, I just looked around and I was like, man, there's something here. <laughs> yeah. There's something here. I mean, everybody that, that witnesses it once yeah. will see that. Every single person who comes there and sees it once will see it. And so what I did when I started taking, you know, taking these classes and my brother had invested in that nice camera <laughs> at the time, uh, I said, okay. I'm going to take this to one of these events and I'm going to start bringing content that these guys haven't seen before. I'm going to start interviewing people and mm-hmm. I'm going to start putting uh, visual imagery to their stories. Really? Yeah. Epic. So, I mean, this is not what I said, but this is what I told myself. Got it. And I started and I interviewed this guy because he had such personality. He mm-hmm. was so passionate on his standings. Um, and he's like one of the most hood dudes there is. Really? <laughs> and this is something that nobody, nobody would have seen coming. I shot this video... This was in 2007, I think. That's when, is that when YouTube kind of popped up? I think so. It was in its early days. Yeah. And I just remember I put that video online. And in the first 24 hours, at least in our community, which was unheard of, it had gotten over 2,000 views. Oh, that's, that's fucking nuts wild. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah that, that was wild. Nuts. Yeah. And, and this is from a guy who goes to all these tournaments and at most sees three to 400 people there. So I'm like, who are these other people? Like, where, yeah. is this, where does this community come from? And I found that video was even linked on Cannabis's website, Rapper. You yeah. know, you oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like, <laughs> talking about, like, look at this crazy dude. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> Shout out to Cannabis on, you know, we lo- love him as a freestyler. But, you know, you I know. got 30 pages of you know, yeah. <laughs> Gotta respect the dude. Yeah, he, but he, he just wanted to take a moment. Though, bro, that was. I wanted to just take a moment. Oh, my God. I, I see, see you. I silence? see you, Cannabis. Mic club. Okay. So, yeah. all right. Just take a moment. Of that was devastating, bro. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right. Sorry about that. Sorry for the deep. I only that. say that because uh, yeah. John, I know you're listening. Uh-oh. John showed me that video. We had a moment watching that oh, devastating man. video oh, of so cannabis sorry. just getting yeah, destroyed. I, 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 I shed a, th- a thug tear, bro. Yeah, yeah. a yeah. big thug tear. <laughs> a big thug tear. Mm-hmm. Like when you know, like it's, it's not even like when your idol is gone, but like when some a staple is oh, just like gotten man. to that point, <laughs> and you just lose all respect. Shout out to disaster. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to disaster. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> we just took it on like a battle rap fucking. Yeah, like, no, tangent tangent. Over here. <laughs> but yeah. Listen, all right. So anyway, bring so it back. So yeah. So so you know, I, I experimented with that, and I, the feedback was very positive. 
Um, and that's why I said, this is it. Like, I my mission is, yes, I'm going to keep playing. I'm going to keep competing. But I want to make sure that people, everybody out there knows who we are and mm. what we do. So that's been my mission since. So you, well, what, what made, so you wanted to build community. Mm. Um, how do you, how do you balance that then? Like being in this community and also, but also reaching a level of greatness, but also wanting to capture it. Cause like, but I feel like you've just been able to balance these like lines of being a gamer and then mm. going to school and like all the, all these yeah. different things that you think would take away from your gaming, mm. if you will. Like naturally all the things that you've been doing are playing a role in, in, in your, the history that you're building. Yeah. But what was it for you? that you wanted to like split your time and be able to balance these types of things as opposed to like singularly focusing on on self what made you focus on the community you know what it is it's for me it's like i, I just you know seeing those pe the same people like you know that just takes it back in this room with this small community of people knowing that what 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 these people are what we do i think is Seriously, these guys have some of the most interesting backgrounds, interesting stories. It's not my position to talk about some of them, but some yeah. of these guys come from like some of the most horrible backgrounds you can imagine. Really? You know, but what their outlet was was what showing up in the camaraderie and all of this. Mm. And I'm like, this is what people need to see. You know, wow. they need to see this community. They need to see how serious some of us take this. Yeah. And it's like, it's not a laughing matter when you see what's on the line now. Yeah. Um, so with me and like choosing a, a specific focus, you really don't have when you're when you're trying to make all these moves. You don't have time to sit down and I, I at least for me and say, okay, this is what I have to focus on. Yeah, because the focus is always going to be just keep <laughs> keep bringing more visibility. Got it. If that means I gotta go out there and try to win this tournament because it's gonna bring buzz. If if that happens, then when these companies talk to me and want to know, oh, congratulations, you did this. I'm gonna make sure I shine light on the community <laughs> and make sure that they know what it is. So if I have to do it myself. Then, it's, or if, if I if I can use myself to 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 promote the the brand, then that's what I'm going to do. Got it. Speaking on the topic of focus, if you guys haven't seen it, Focus <laughs> oh, is a great nice document. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well that done. came out of left <laughs> for me <laughs> too. <laughs> I was like, let's speak <laughs> about focus. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that was professional. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Focus is a great documentary. Um, Thank you. Uh, about Mike's journey to. Mm -hmm. Evo, mm -hmm. uh, the biggest fighting game tournament. Mm -hmm. um, it's a beautiful story. It's an amazing story. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and it captures that. It, it really, you know, woke me up to that community. Mm -hmm. And what it, that, I've, I honestly didn't take it that seriously mm -hmm. until I saw that because yeah. I was like, oh True. shit, this is a very real thing. Um, and uh, I, I, I obviously, you know, watching you go through it, mm -hmm. it also shined a lot, a lot, a lot on me uh, for you and what you've been doing. Yeah. So talk about that road to Evo because it's got to be a, a pivotal point um, on multiple levels, and we'll get into it. But what? Yeah. Yeah. Get, get in it, man. Evo, it, 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 it's it's a it's a nutty thing. So, you know, first off, you know, my buddy that did it, Steve Hong the guy that made uh, focus, he had asked me like years in advance, like three years prior. He's like, Hey man, let me do a documentary on this, on what you do. Like the street, the fighter stuff, the Marvel vs. Capcom two stuff at the time. And I told him, nah, <laughs> I was like, and the reason why I was like, a, I didn't want to be the subject. Yeah. B, I don't think it would be good content for him. Okay. I, I looked at where our community was. Street Fighter 4 was not out yet. Yeah. You know, I'd, we had all been playing roughly the same game for like six years at this point. Wow. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, you know, if there's nothing new, it's, it's kind of fading away. So, uh, yeah, he, I told him, nah. He asked me again about a year and a half later. I told him, nah. <laughs> like, nah, it's just not, not cool enough. And then 2010 came around and he hit me up. He's like, hey. It's my final graduation project, you know, at that, that school that, uh, where they showed it. Yeah. I'm not asking you anymore. I'm telling yeah, you he, at this point. No, no, he's like, yo, you know, and I was just, I just wanted to do it on, on you and the Street Fighter stuff. Now, this is 2010. At this point, I had started to make a name for myself a year prior in 2009. Got it. 
Um, we can talk about that too. Yeah. If you, if, I don't know if I should yeah, go there. Yeah, yeah, Get it, go yeah, there, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, Can't yeah. just open the box oh, and be yeah. like, psych. Okay, okay. Now you got me on 09. So, so, so we took a step yeah, back. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> in uh, 2007, that was... Okay, no, you can't go to 2007. Okay, let me sorry. go to 2008. I'm totally no, fucking no, with no, you. No, 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 no. You're right. No, no, no yeah, thank you. Know, you. I was wrong. No, 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 no. So I was wrong in the year. Hold on. When I was born. Hold on. I was, I was wrong. I was wrong in the year, so I needed... You're right. It's 2008. I got to go to 2008. Gotcha. 2008, they announced a new Street Fighter was coming out, uh, Street Fighter 4. The game looked I thought beautiful. you just said a new Street Fighter, but hey, it's fine. Street Fighter 4 came out 2008. <laughs> yeah, so I looked at it, and I was like, oh, this looks great. Like, this is awesome. Um, I want to be the best. <laughs> you know, I said, I want to be the best at this. I'm not going to look at anybody else's videos. I'm going to figure everything out on my own, blah, blah, blah. Got like I, I went through some crazy mental things I was going to do to prepare to be great at this game because I didn't want to be influenced by what else other people were doing at the time. What, what, what was that moment for you, though? Like, okay, Street Fighter Four came out. It's because I never achieved the level of greatness <laughs> that I did, like that I wanted in Marvel, in, Mar okay. in, the, in the previous game. Okay. I was good at the game. I was really good at the game. Um, but I had never gotten that like top eight at Evo moment okay. to really make my claim like, yeah, I belong up here with everybody else because okay. I'm ridiculous. So when Street Fighter Four came out, I said, this is my time. I am going to devote all of my time to be good at this game. Um, How old were you around that time? This was 25. Okay. Yeah, I was 25. Got it. Um, 24 turning 25, okay. something like that. And uh, anyways... Uh, GameStop store, GameStop yep. that sells all those games. They mm -hmm. announced that we're going to have the largest tournament. Every GameStop store in the United States is going to have a Street Fighter tournament. So there's over 100,000 people that entered. That's fucking wild. And bro. first place or top 16 got flown to San Francisco. You know, you win all these cool prizes of, you know, but I said I wanted, I wanted to win. You want to win? I'm going to win. Like I was just so motivated. Yeah. Um, so, uh, the game comes out. I enter. There's three rounds. Uh, very first round. How long I, did you have to prepare for that? Uh, uh about a not too long. I mean, maybe a few months. We'll say. Okay. So the game. Well, here's the thing. Okay. Uh, you can you can jump back and forth, baby. We're okay. already here. Let's rock. Okay. Actually, yeah. No, 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 no. So when the game came out, the, the way it worked was there would be rounds of tournaments. Uh, the first round would happen, I think, on the game's release date. Okay. So at the store, you go there, you enter this tournament. If you win, the next round is like two weeks later, three weeks later Got at a smaller location because now it's not at every GameStop. Now Got it's it. like, now we're at 128. We took the 128 or something that win, yep. and you go here uh, until they got down to the final 16. So there were three total rounds and then the finals. Mm. Um, so after the first round, I won. I was like, oh, cool. I know all of these good players. The next one is in... Uh, somewhere else. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm, my no memory's worries. a little dead. Yeah, no worries. Second round was in West Covina or something like that. I remember I went there and I, I won that one too. Now the third round, had, now the game's been out for maybe uh, a month. Okay. The game's been out a month now. And there were 16 remaining locations. Me being from SoCal, like all the best players I felt were from SoCal. The only other great player, his name is Justin Wong from New York. Okay. And that guy is a legend. Mm -hmm. uh, won four Evos in a row. He has a total of like seven wins at Evo That's or something like that, wild. like at 15 years old. Uh, so he was like, beast. this guy is a beast. He's a myth. <laughs> and he's from New York. Uh, we knew each other, blah, blah, blah. Talked a little trash. But in my head, from the moment they announced this tournament, I said it's going to be me and him in the grand finals. I'm going to get there. Um, so when round three came, there's 16 remaining locations. Again, I'm broke. <laughs> but one of the tournaments was in Atlanta. And mm. I said, I don't think anybody good is going to go to Atlanta. <laughs> like, anybody that can beat me. Yeah. Got you. Scrum. Oh, so you had to play tactically on, like, yeah. which one you went to. So then. all of the great players that I know from SoCal all drove up to San Francisco, got bodied. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I, I fly to Atlanta. Um, it was, like, the closest match ever in my life I, I ended up winning that one beating a, not only a Japanese player that that flew out for it in Atlanta <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> the, the um, dude had to come to yeah, fucking Atlanta yeah, of all places yeah and then uh, another great player Long Island Joe from Long Island uh, everybody thought he was going to beat me I got lucky I beat him and then after that I won a uh, as two interesting things happened in Atlanta okay one I won my first joystick I nice. never owned one 
<laughs> I always borrowed it. Oh, nice. So when I got that thing, honestly, I wanted to cry. <laughs> you oh, know, really? I didn't, but I wanted to. The Mama! Thing, yeah, no, Mama! Yeah. Oh. I'm going to get there. Right, I'm going to get there. Right, let's I'm going to get there. Yeah, I'm going to tell you when I said those words. <laughs> so so, uh, so I, I get this joystick. Stick is worth 150 bucks. That's like crazy and expensive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. The fact that I won this thing, I'm like, this is, it. This is like the best thing ever. Also, the first thing that happened to me at that event was the very first time I ever encountered a fan. Really? And it was the most awkward <laughs> and uncomfortable feeling I've ever had. Oh, because, how so? Because wow. for the most, all my life, you know, I'm walking around like this, right? And, you know, you, I go to school, backpack on, Hoodie head on. down, yeah, head down, walk into my class, blah, 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 you know, not really much interaction. I'm in Atlanta now, and I'm just in the background, I'm just like, I, I just want to win this tournament, I just want to win this tournament. And then, you know, even before I started, there was this dude who was side-eyeing me, and I'm just like, <laughs> you know like what <laughs> yeah. there's a problem like I don't know why he's like grilling me like this and then he comes over are you <laughs> you know blah 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 and I was like yeah yeah like why what's up oh man I just want to say dude like, you know, uh, I was like what and I was like, what? like, like why <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't understand Got you. because from the 128 people that were in that room, yeah. there were no fans of anybody. Everybody yeah. wanted to get first. Got you. <laughs> Everybody came here because their friend told them, you're good, you should go here and win. Mm. Yep. You know? Yep. So then when I'm out here, I was like, wait, there's people that just, that, like, just want to be fans. Like, yeah. I don't know, sorry. No worries. And I was like, man, that was, uh, that was crazy. Um, anyways, I won that. He gave me props afterwards. He was super happy. Um, now I'm in the final round getting flying to San Francisco. I'm on that plane. I look out that window <laughs> oh. and, uh, you know, I'm just amazed that now this is the first time they're flying me somewhere. Word. I land in that hotel. I'm in San Francisco, Fisherman's Wharf. Yep. I said, mom, I wish you could see this now. Oh, <laughs> right. moment. I said, I wish you could see this now. I think, I think you'd be proud of me. You know, yeah. that's all I'm thinking. You know, I, <sighs> I actually said that. So, so that's why it's kind of funny. Uh, to me, yeah. That was my moment of success. Word. That's when I feel like felt like, you wow. know, I made it because that was my goal was to be on that kind of that real that real professional player level. Mm. Um getting flown it out. Wasn't to place. Monetary, it, no, wasn't it wasn't monetary. It wasn't monetary, but look at this from a guy who walked home from his art, you know, from school and would stop at an arcade and they said you should go here because you're pretty good. Yeah. From a dude that pointed and said, you suck. Yeah. They flew me here. I'm in a hotel that's paid for it. They gave me food or a uh, per diem. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, like, you know, yeah. I had to learn what per diem yeah. meant. <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, and they're providing me this for playing a video game. Yeah. And I said, okay, if I can do this, like other people need to see this because they need mm. to know that they can do this as well. And if they don't think that they can compete in it, yeah. you can at least watch it and you'll be entertained because I saw one fan and I know there can be more. <laughs> you know. Now let me ask you this: During yeah. that time, mm. what, what was the role of the internet, and like, what was the role of like mm. the expansion yeah. of the community through the internet at good that question. moment? Yes. So, very good question. So, um, around that time, there really wasn't, you know, was, Twitter wasn't that live. You know, anybody on Twitter, the highest follower account maybe had been like one to two thousand people. <laughs> like those are like the elite accounts that were non. 50 cents, so, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so that wasn't really a, a way of promotion. Uh, for me, I would go on my buddy Gutex. He, uh, he did a podcast. We did a podcast. Wow. Yeah, back Gutex, then. Gutex podcast. And then, um, when we did that, that was our first time really talking to each other. Yeah. we knew each other's names. Uh, but when I did that podcast, he said, oh, we'll just be like 30 minutes. And we ended up talking for like two hours. Well, there it is. <laughs> and then I was like, this guy gets it. Yeah. He sees it the exact same way I do. He sees this community. That type of stuff, the viewership was like maybe a hundred, a couple hundred people. Yeah. Um, I mean, but, you know, I can get to that later, but we, we built that audience. We worked together to build up that audience uh, on our own. But yeah, the internet itself, um, videos existed on YouTube. They were getting a couple thousand hits, nothing crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Street Fighter Four kind of changed that. Uh, dang, you, you, I would. I need to get to that in a bit. Get it? <laughs> yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, 
Yeah, but just to just to kind of finish on um, 2009 and what got to the road to Evo, which also uh, harnesses the social media aspect, is I went to San Francisco. I got second place. Was uh, it against the ju- Wong dude from New York? Yeah, just like predicted, right? That's wild. <laughs> they bro. even uh, yeah, somebody they even put us on opposite ends of the bracket because they kind of figured that we were the guys to mm. be. Keep in mind, as I'm saying this, there might be 14 other people that are listening that were in that tournament that are salty. I'm saying, this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying hey, we were the ones that were going to get all the way. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, and again, as a player, you got to imagine I'm an arcade dude. Yeah. That's what I come from. That's what I play. Mm-hmm. We're out here in San Francisco. The most people I'm seeing is a f- you know a few hundred. There were over 1,500 people lined up outside to get inside this venue. Oh, there were shit. people that tried to sneak on our bus to take pictures and it's stuff no like that and get our, get our autograph. That's I thought wild. these people were hired. I thought they were hired to <laughs> no troll us. I really did because I'm like, what is this? <laughs> Why? <laughs> like, I thought they were what, hired. You know, what the fuck's going yeah, on here? Yeah, I did not understand. I didn't realize this. Um, and that's, you know, that, that tournament changed everything for me. That's when I that's when I got a clearer vision of of what this community can be. Got it. Now granted, you know, did I see this from the start? No. Yeah. <laughs> but you just I just saw it through. But you yeah. knew there and was I, something. Because yeah, there you was definitely naturally something. had an affinity yeah, for that community. Of course. Yeah. And if something I feel like if something grabs my interest, it can probably grab a lot of other people's interests as well. And that's yeah. what this definitely was one of them. Um Man, oh, geez, social media. How how does how does that play into well, let's, all this? Let's, so yeah. you you're doing the, the. Was he filming the documentary at that point? No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah this this is, did not exist. Yeah. Okay. That's why. Thank you for yeah, bringing we, it we, back. Yeah. We're in, we're in the road to why. Evo. Yeah. We'll yeah. get the, we'll get the social media. We here. But so, it, it's actually I, I just want to jump in. Yeah. It's like this story is actually more fascinating. Mm. Um, mm. because you really went from nothing to something mm. like the road mm. to Evo. Now, if I, I wish I had known this backstory yeah. watching that film, yeah. cause this is now you already had your launch. Now you're yes. going to the next level, but this was really from nothing to, to yes. the, the real mama. We made yes. a moment and you first got that real taste. Yep. Um, that is something super special. Yeah. I love that journey. Well, yeah. It, it, it became, it became, you started to believe it then. Yes. Was it was, oh, that, was that that like apex? So it was there that I mean. So what what it told me was I achieved something already. Okay. Like you know I had I've never entered a tournament that big and yeah. did that well. <laughs> never yeah. in my life. I've gotten you know I've won local tournaments, smaller tournaments. I've done well and whatever. Um, but not, when you're talking a hundred thousand people all over the like U.S., that's crazy. Yeah, that's Granted, wild. not all of them are top level players. No. Some are just entering to have fun. Yeah. But still, it's a large pool of that's people. A that's a big pool, dude. That's insane. Yeah. That's a big fucking yeah. pool. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> nationwide, all yeah. games. A hundred thousand. Yeah. That's a that's very fucking wild. So, a very big yeah. pool. And you have the beasts from all across the land, yeah. and like. Yeah. Infiltrating, like you're yep. over here going to fucking Atlanta. Yep. Yeah. Because exactly. then you have like a better shot, and then right. you have a dude from Japan yep. and fucking Long Island. Yep. What's his name? Yeah, Joe. Long Island Joe. Long That's Island Joey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you got the names. You got the names. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Long Island Joe. <laughs> That's right. Oh, man. It's, That's epic. So yeah, that was like that. That was that just told me so much. So when my boy came back, you know, on his third ask, and I was like. Let me do a documentary and follow you on this on the gaming stuff. Him not knowing any of this stuff now. Yeah. Because it was his final school project. Yeah. I'm like in my head I'm like, well, there's there's fans now. <laughs> you know, like there's uh there's a larger community. It's not gonna be a room with hundred and twenty eight people. Yeah. Um yeah, let's do this. <laughs> awesome. So then when he started doing that. It was supposed to be just a one month project, like okay. or just like he's just gonna follow me around for a month. Um, I, the two tournaments that he followed me at, I did really well, did really well, mm-hmm. and he saw like I was progressing because all I wanted to do was my goal at the time was get top eight at Evo. Word. I've been doing this for about ten years now, and I've never gotten top eight at Evo. I've gotten seventeenth, <laughs> you know, I've gotten close. So you've gone to Evo a few times now. Uh, I've never missed one. Oh, you never missed one. I've never missed one. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've never missed one. So, so you were. You, let me let me interject here yeah. though, because at at that point you are you're in your late twenties, real. Right? Yes. So Going, you're a professional gamer. Mm. 
the gaming world is still growing. Yeah. The income from gaming, you're not in South Korea. Mm. How did you balance like living during those moments and also still being as passionate as you were about yeah. it? Because like hearing you talk about this mm-hmm. in this gaming world, it's not like the money was was the motivator here. Right. But how did you balance yeah. life and gaming at that point? Because like you're yeah. reaching an age where it's like I'm you're gaming, I'm, you're you're you're, yeah. you're aspiring for like super competitive status. Mm-hmm. But it's like you're 28. I'm going yeah, at the time I was trying to reach on that. 27 now. I was about to turn 27. So what, what was that balance like for you? And then like you know, I want to get to that moment. But like this is real life here. Yeah. Because a lot of like w- whether it's it's athletics, whether it's music, whether it's sports, like people get in the moments of their lives of like, bro, if you're not fucking making money, yeah, doing something, yeah, yeah, then you, and you start getting to the right. I'm almost thirty age, yeah, yeah. It's exactly. not only family and friends and all this, but it's also like self. Like, wait, what? What's gonna be the move here? Like, what? Yeah. What's it gonna take for me to either like continue and 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 exponentially rise or? To hang up the sticks and say it was fun while it lasted. So those thoughts didn't hit me until I was thirty. Wow. Until Epic. I was until I was like twenty. Until I was uh, yeah. Until I was thirty. Awesome. So at this time, it was about I need to keep doing this. Okay. Because my goals are different. Got it. Now, That's a different know, mindset yeah, then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. My goals are I want to be uh, the best at this. I want to get sponsored by a team so that they're paying me for this. Got it. You know, um, so you're all about it at all costs. Yes. Mm. So what I was doing, um, I was doing videography. I was doing videography for weddings, high school basketball games to make side money. I would also try to snipe local tournaments to see where I could go and try to win. Oh, it's a hundred dollar cash prize here for first place. I'm going to go there. I'm going to drive. I'm not going to tell nobody. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like, you look for those things. Got it. Um, so, yeah, you didn't have no money. Everybody was broke, but that wasn't the point. Got you know, it. it's like uh, money, as my dad said, fine, do something you love, the money will come. Right? Yeah. The money yeah. will come later. Um, of course, I didn't abide by that back then. I was stressed out. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know? oh, man. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, the struggle was yeah, very yeah, real. Yeah. Very yeah. real. Yeah. 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 yeah so. But it's like just to be able to understand that yeah. because it's like. It's refreshing to hear that like those thoughts came to you mm-hmm. when you were 30 mm-hmm. or like the, they weren't even on your sphere like that, mm-hmm. you know, but like even now in this day and age, like it's going to, those kind of thoughts are going to be coming to cats a lot younger now. Right. But yeah. just to know that like somebody that's reached levels yeah. that you've reached, yeah. right? Not even just like in terms of like being a gamer, but mm-hmm. like being a pillar of the gaming community. Right. Um, to see that you've you'd held on to the love of it for mm-hmm. so long mm-hmm. and you were just going to get better. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I think that speaks volumes about your journey, but also like to like anybody, like I, I can't fucking fathom the gaming world. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I have like a respect for it. Yeah. Especially after watching the, the documentary, like, and also us talking, it's like, I have like a, a respect for it. You still don't get it per se. Mm. Right. Mm. Because we all have different like loves and, and, and different things. Like, uh, attract us to to, to ways in, yeah. of life, but like you have to be able to respect that for like you know any path that you're taking. If you really believe in it, like really believe, then you'll be able to say like truly money wasn't the issue because money wasn't the issue, but you were doing things to make it happen. Yeah, you weren't just being like fuck, dad. Yeah. Like let me borrow some money today. Yeah. You were like shit. Yeah, if I needed to eat, you know, Mickey D's, I'll probably do that. If I yeah. need to get $1 exactly. meals, I need to do That's that. It. Yeah. But it's not going to be a worry of mine. Right. I'm right, not no. going to, tra- I'm not going to like veer off the path for anything. So yeah. Like when- what, what, what was that? Like th- 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 there's something like, that's like a fucking like X factor. Like, I don't know. You know what? It, it, driven by, by your passion. Or- what it was for me is like, you know, the reason why that hit me later is because when I'm 27 yeah. or, you know, and I have these goals, I want to get sponsored. I want to make X amount a month, which was nothing. Yeah. Like you can't survive off of what I was getting. Yeah. But it's a lot better than zero. Yeah. You know, so yeah. me wanting these goals and me hitting them, I'm not worried about my future because it's still going up. I didn't start worrying about it, it till everything started going away. Got <laughs> it. Got it. And that hit, that hit around 30. Got it. And once, uh, you know, once things weren't moving like I had hoped, I had looked around and, uh, you know, I saw that 
you know, maybe other people. My, my sense of mind was that this gaming stuff is going to blow up, <coughs> but just maybe not during my my generation. Mm. You know, the That's next the next generation is going to have all of the benefits that I had dreamed of. Going to a tournament, first place is a hundred thousand dollar check. Yeah, because what know? was it, what for uh, that road to evil? What yeah. was the prize at the end? First place was probably at that year. It was a specific year. They actually had a big. Prize bonus. Okay. There was an extra fifteen thousand dollars spread amongst top eight. Okay. So first place probably got, uh, with the entries, probably close to ten thousand dollars. Which is interesting because that's not that much money to that's be honest. That's nothing. Yeah. That's you train the whole year for this one tournament, and that's what you get. You wow. know, and that's the biggest one. So you, I, I can see. I mean, it's kind of not hard to not think about money. It's like Correct. now it's it's. If it was a hundred thousand yeah. dollars, you'd have way more different motivations. Yep. So I could see your motivations yep. really just to be great and win. Yeah. Um, the prize is all good, mm -hmm. and those things are great. Yeah. But um, you truly were drawn by wanting to win. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At the time, right? At the time, um, yeah. Wanting to win. I mean, even if I ever enter anything, of course I just want to win, right? Nobody yeah. should ever enter anything in life they want to do if they're not trying to excel and be better than everybody else. Mm. I, I think. Um, Absolutely. Or maybe it's just a competitive spirit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just well, I think you're highly competitive. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what was I talking about? The, uh, the going back to the road. Uh, road uh, okay. So yeah. going back to the road. Uh, back to when I agreed to do it. Is that yeah. what I'm going to? Okay. Well, we're talking, yeah, you're talking about uh, yeah. he followed you around, saw your okay. progression. Yeah, so I was doing better, and uh, his project was due. He presented it to his teacher, and his teacher said no. His wow. teacher said, I'm not going to let you turn this in. He said, I'm going to give you an extension because I really like what you're doing here, and I'll help you and make sure that we get this, like, this is really good. So he Why did the teacher say no? Because he liked it so much. Oh, he liked it so much. Yeah, he told oh, wow. he told him. Oh, he, yeah, yeah he told him. He he accepted everybody else's project, and he told my guy. He said, "I want you to work on this longer and finish it and give it to me later." Oh, I got it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, By the way, the he shows it at that school every year to his to the students at that school wow. to show. That's amazing. Of work. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. But um, so he got this extension because so he kept following me around longer. Documentary wasn't supposed to go to Evo, you know, wasn't supposed to go there, but it's just because I kept doing so well and I was so motivated and the teacher was just interested, I guess, and like, where does this go? Where does this go? Um, you know, uh, <laughs> I still remember. <laughs> like, I still get hyped just thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, it's crazy. thinking about it. Uh, you know, it's, I still kept it on the keychain. The oh, year, that's insane. The same year. Wow. Y'all can't see this right now, but we have the... The yeah. keychain from from the year wow. I was there. So that's like that's just some memorabilia. So a constant reminder. Constant reminder. Epic. Um, so you know, I'll go there, and I was I was determined. I was focused. I I took money matches. I went to people's hotel rooms. I don't know if I'll get in trouble for announcing this stuff. But I don't care. But I went to. Uh, I was so hungry to do well. I trained so hard. You know. Um, I remember being in my room the night before. I played against one of the best players in Southern California. Um, yeah, I'll bring this up because I hope he forgot about it. His name was Ed Ma. And this is one of the guys that was like my targets that I had to beat this guy. Yeah. I said, I'm going to, I asked him, I said, let's play first to 10. First to 10 wins. Mm -hmm. And in my head, I said, if I lose one game, I'm not going to do well. Uh, the final score was 10 to 1. He beat me like on one of the last games. And I hit my stick so hard that I broke it. Oh, so I couldn't, really? use it. I couldn't use it the next day <laughs> at Evo. Wow. So, so, and so, you one and yeah, you're hitting yeah, it, you're breaking your stick. Yeah. So, yeah, this is the dark side that nobody hears about, right? Yeah, like, yeah, they don't know. Yeah. And, uh, Hear about those rage quits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going, I'm driving to Vegas. I got me, I got two, two of my people with me. I get a phone call from one of the players I look up to more than anything, Combo Fiend, who's now my roommate in San Francisco. And he calls me up. This guy's a legend. And he's like, this is your year. This is your year. <laughs> and this is a guy who's done it many times. Really? You know, so he's like, yeah, this is your year, man. Nobody can beat you. Whatever. So, uh, How'd that feel? I was so focused. Ooh. Like, I was so focused. Because, yeah. you know, like, I'm just, you you're, just see you're taking that long drive. And once you get across the, the border and, you know, welcome to Las Vegas, you know, and I'm just still just like, you know, I got my music up. Head shaking, I'm just like pumped the whole time. Yeah, you know. And uh, what was your song? Because like in that documentary, you reference like your song, like when your song comes on and like all this. You know what I mean? Like, ooh, I don't what, know what it was at the time. Okay, like there's different. 
there might have been one particular, but okay. I was listening to everything. Okay. It was like Air Force Ones, you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was Give not me <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. It was it was probably like stepped on the scene or something. Oh, word, <laughs> word, <laughs> plug, <laughs> royalties. Oh, <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, so I, you know, I went there first night. I gotta play people. I gotta play everybody. Um, you know, I'm trying to find matches. Played a few people, um, but I also didn't do too much. Probably like one or two people just to warm up. Tournament was next day on Friday. Uh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I did money match everybody that night. And what's a money match? Thing. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so basically, like, mind you, we're not gamers here. Yeah, no. I'm sorry. You got to remind me. I'm sorry. So I like, love it though. You know. What's the controller? What are the stakes here? <laughs> so you know, I show up in Vegas, and then I'm like, oh, snaps. That's Joe Roush. Like, he's one of the hottest dudes. You know, in LA, um, he's won a lot. I need to play him. I know his Ryu is really good. Okay. Yo, let's play. First to five, 20 bucks. Word. Oh, you know? so you would just bet yeah, people. 20 yeah, 20 bucks. Gotcha. Um, I had people come up to me. You know, there were specific rooms where everybody would just go and gather and try to do that. Is the hotel? Got it. Yeah, inside yeah. the hotel. Um, and so, yeah, I had a guy come up to me. I don't think you're that good. <laughs> He's telling me this. I'm like, cool. He says, I want to play you first to five, 100 bucks. You know, uh, I, no, I hustled him. I'm sorry. I don't, oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. He said 20 bucks. I pulled out a hundred and said, I only have a hundred. Can we do that? <laughs> and I only did it. Cause I was like, I asked around first. I was like, who is this guy? Yeah. I don't know. And you know, people's like, I don't know. I don't know. I was like, all right, then I'll play him a hundred bucks. I beat him five zero. You know, I went 14 and zero in money matches the night before. Word. So I was like, I'm confident. Yeah. I made money. Now Vegas trip was paid for. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Definitely. um, yeah, man. And then once that tournament started, I, so focused. <laughs> I was so hungry to get top eight. Like I, I don't know. I missed. I missed that hunger. You know, because I after after you achieve that, there's nothing. But now oh, let me man. ask you. This, <laughs> you guys are getting me hyped. Again. No, <laughs> it's just no, that's a beautiful, that's a like beautiful it. thing, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like getting top. Like I want to know: is there a reason? Because you know, you alluded to if you if, if, if when you get into something, you 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 don't you shouldn't get in unless you want like gonna win it all. Correct. I think you're gonna win it all. Yeah. What what struck me in watching this documentary is there was the, you know the the first pivotal moment for you was mm -hmm. the GameStop when you wanted to get top two. Yeah, because you're gonna play against a dude from New York who was already legendary, but like yes. you wanted to get there. Correct. And then in this in 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 this Evo, mm -hmm. it was top eight. Mm -hmm. That was the, that was the limit. Right. So, so was top is top eight like for you was top eight like that christening or was it like. You, wh wh why wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna win this fucking thing. So, so granted, yes. You know, once you get there, you want to win more than anything. Yeah, always. However, for me, like I'm looking at this, I'm looking at the community. I was there when there was a hundred, you know, a few hundred people. Yeah. I got on stage. The organizer of the whole tournament that's been doing this since you know '90s. Yeah. Is next to me. You know, uh, ran by two twins brothers. Like they're super cool dudes and uh, Joey. Quayar, these three guys, like whatever, this is their stuff. But I'm up there and I'm sitting in the chair and I'm looking at him and then I'm looking at the crowd. This is, this is when I made top eight. The reason why is when you make top eight, that's totally on Sunday. Sunday is only the top eight best players of every game. So, you know, um, the tournament size at this point had grown to over 2,000 competitors. Oh, wow. So when I'm sitting up there, there's 2,000 competitors. Like the final table of like a yeah. huge poker game. Yes, there's 2,000 competitors in the crowd, but there's also another three or 4,000 spectators. Oh, shit. So I'm looking at the crowd, and I look back at him, and I was like, never would have seen this coming. <laughs> you know, just telling him that, right? Like just Damn. seeing all the crowd, because I'm used to, you know, my leg was shaking when there was 100 people behind me watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now there's 5,000 people. You were doing the diddy bop when yeah. you were like sitting there. Yeah. yeah. And now there's 5,000 people over there, and I'm just looking, and I'm. You know, whatever. It's nothing now. It's nothing. I don't care if there's 5,000 or 5 million. Word. You know, because I remember what it was like shaking in front of 100. Yeah. So yeah. the number doesn't scare me any, any, anymore. Got it. Um, You've so, been there before. Yeah. And now here I am. I'm top eight. That's where they're looking. Yeah. You know, and while some people, uh, I, I was up there for sure. I was practicing every day. You know, I wanted to win. I wanted nothing more than to win. Mm. However, I knew one of the guys in the tournament, his name is Daigo Umehara. 
yeah. from Japan. He's known as the Beast. He's been winning every tournament since he was like 15 years old as well. And he's now at this tournament 29, 30 maybe. Okay. A uh, few, two years, three years older than me. Yeah. In my head, I'm like, dang, he's way better than me. I know this. <laughs> I know this. <laughs> and there's other people, some dude from Korea. These dudes are. These dudes are nice, Vicious. you know, yeah. but I'm up here. Let me show them why I'm here. You yeah. know? Let me show them Los That's Angeles. Right. Let yeah. me show them SoCal, you know? Yeah. Um, so then I get there. Uh, I had to face the guy from Japan very first round. First time ever playing him. Got it. Read about him, seen documentaries on him. Dude just destroys me. Really? <laughs> and I'm not discouraged. I'm mad. I'm not smiling. I'm mad. You know, like most people would be like, oh, I got to play him. And I'm mad. I'm like, okay. I can't get up here and just get top eight and do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so the next guy I had to play was a guy that eliminated Justin Wong. Oh, you wow. know, from, Shit. from Taiwan. Wow. Okay. So when I got him, he got that work. I feel you. Know? you. So then after I that, feel yeah. you. so, so, you <laughs> know, like, I put on for my <laughs> city. Yeah, What's exactly. up? So after he got that work, that's when people validated my top eight. Got it. Yeah. They said, it's not just some guy who showed up. He actually beat good players. Got you it. You know, um, and then from there, that's when everything changed. Team managers coming up to me, you know, when I made top eight. Hey, Mike, you know, we should talk, you know, like uh, <laughs> maybe you might want to join a team or something, you know, whack teams, more than whack teams and good teams as well. And I was like, oh, the landscape is changing. You know, this is everything I wanted. Now I'm about to be a sponsored player and all this kind oh, of stuff. Damn. Oh, man, the sponsors are coming. Yes. And, so at the, and at the same time, uh, coincidentally, I had just started our YouTube channel and we had one video up. At this Evo. Okay. Um, our very first video ever doing content on Street Fighter. It was through this YouTube company called Machinima. Not sure if Got you guys it. heard yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and uh, they, we went there to do a sneak preview for Street Fighter 4, Super Street Fighter 4, whatever. Um, I know I'm kind of going on tangents. No, I'm sorry. Oh, no, yeah. It's, it's, like a, it's a, a combo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we did it. They were like, hey, we got this game. Shout outs to Jose. <laughs> you know. Uh, this guy discovered us, Blue 15, and he was like, yo, man, you guys are here by our office. We have an early copy of the new Street Fighter, Super Street Fighter 4, but we don't know how to play this game. Would you guys like to play? He's talking to Gutex because he sees him. He's like, oh, yeah, Mike, my buddy is here right now. We'll, we're auditioning for some uh, Ultimate Gamer reality show. <laughs> <laughs> we're auditioning, and while we were auditioning, another company was in that building, Machinima, and they were like, yeah, why don't you guys just come and play? Dope. So we went there, we got to preview it, they recorded us, and afterwards they were like, you guys want to do a show here, like a regular thing? Like, <laughs> like this is awesome. Wild. You so guys Completely by chance. By chance. So me and Bo are like, yeah, we didn't know what that meant. We're like, what can we do? Yeah, we're yeah. like, let's... Let's analyze people's matches that are really bad and give them tips. You know, we'll take matches from the internet. That way anybody can do it. You know, like anybody's accessible. Yeah. We just have to look at it and see if we can help you. We will. Um, the Machinima pushed it. The very first video we did got 100,000 views. Shit. I didn't know what to do. Like, so I, you I don't know just, what that means. You would just, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I don't know what, what, is, yeah. what just happened. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's what happened. I, don't like, know. I, I didn't know what that meant. Because the very first video I uploaded got 2,000 in 24 hours. Yeah. You know, and now this, yeah. this kind of next one, if you will, um, next major one, got 100,000 in, in like a few days or something like that. That's epic. And when that happened, I remember this launched like a few days before that Evo, before that Evo. And when I went there, somebody came up to me again. It was like, Mike, I saw your show. I loved it. And I thought he was trolling me. I thought he was lying. Because I was, you know, because, because what, what's I, with you and the fans, dude, bro? No, listen. You know, <laughs> look, look. Hold on, hold on. Look. I, I bet by now to any of Mike's fans, feel free to go up to him. Yeah. But if, if you had if you had come across Mike in his earlier years, let me apologize to you for on his behalf. Like. <laughs> I got, I got visibly, I got visibly upset. And You're like, Kanye in fans <laughs> right now. I feel you, this guy. <laughs> oh, man. You're telling kids that like are telling you they're Yo. mesmerized by you that they don't have the answers. <laughs> oh, you fuck with my video? <laughs> fuck you. What the fuck? You think I'm gonna believe you? <laughs> Sorry, man. It's just. Oh. That's epic. But it's just like you know, I'm a man of quality and standards. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I went to film school. Not saying that. Oh, that, that, I'm, what I'm. Let me finish. 
So is this a rant from Ellen? Or no, 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 no. My, are you seasoned <laughs> right now? <laughs> you know, we, we worked. We, you know, we had to do projects in those film studios. Yeah. Nice cameras, like you know, we had to learn the layout of everything. Yeah. Right. So I feel like I, I not that I could produce it. Yeah. But I know what standards of quality are. So it's this, not foreign to you. Right. So this video that this guy told me, like he's a fan of the show, he really liked it off our first episode. We sat on stacks of zero of. Uh, printing paper Word. as our chairs we had a handheld camera you know we were in a conference room uh somebody's just like yeah and go so we're sitting there I just feel, like yeah. uh welcome guys you know cross <laughs> counter you. I, I guess. my name is gutex my name is mike ross yeah and we're gonna analyze this video <laughs> you know so like we're yeah. like we don't know what this like is, we are thinking like we did it it's garbage but we did it so when somebody told me that i'm like you know, I, I didn't think anybody could like this. It's I not you. possible. I yeah. got you. The quality is so bad. Right. <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, so just hearing that, it was just, yeah, I, I, I try to understand. I'm trying to be more understanding. I get now. it. I get it. <laughs> <That's> so funny. <laughs> I'm a bit more understanding now. He's looking at me like, are you judging me every <laughs> yeah. second right now? Yeah. But That's I mean, so funny. Yeah. So I, it, it, yeah. So this <laughs> came out on the heels of that Evo then? Yes. So, so, so then you, you reached your goal. Yeah. So when Evo, so when Evo happened, mm. our first video had gone up like a few days before. Got it. So once I got back, like I think our second or third episode was me talking about, yeah, I got top eight at Evo. So it's kind of cool just seeing that um, happen. But then again, that's where kind of that social media stuff came from. Okay. We we took that buzz and we never stopped. Okay. We never stopped. You and Gutex. Viewership dipped like crazy, right? Eventually, after time, we were getting back down to 15, 20,000 views per video. And when you start somewhere like so high up, you know what I think is so high up, it's like that that sucks to see that. But screw it. That's our audience now. I'm going to cater to these guys. And you, uh, you stayed very consistent with it. Yes. Consistency yeah. was everything. Yeah. Without it, I mean, you know, during the worst of times when you think there's nothing going for you, you got to... You got to make sure you, you, you cater to the people that care. <laughs> yeah. You know, and there was there was definitely a group of people that cared. It wasn't as as big as you know we had initially thought, but they were still there, and we never we never forgot about them. And now you know we're back up to the hundred thousand and up. <laughs> well, first out, so it's kind of cool. When you uh after you got top eight and yeah. Evo into that and stuff started fading, mm. um was that around the time where you uh, were thirty? Yes. So, so talk about that because I want to talk about a low point among this. I mean, obviously, there's the low point in the journey, but that's mm -hmm. more of like the hunger and the struggle. That's the fun part. Yeah. But I, I want to talk about that feeling where the buzz or the hype or the, the hunger maybe is, yeah. is even gone mm -hmm. or um, you kind of attained what you wanted to. Mm hmm Where where's the is the fire still there mm. is you know, can you make this a real career into mm -hmm. the long term? Can you really make money? Not like a few checks, but yeah. real money. Where do you, where does your tra uh, trajectory go from here? So it hit a point, right? Um, you know, competition, the nature of the beast was changing. After I got top eight, uh, I set that as my goal. And I don't know how many people out there have set goals that they feel are really hard to achieve and actually achieved them. Yeah. When you achieve those goals, you lose that passion for that immediately. <laughs> right? Like, you know, I did it. I did it already. Like I, why, there's no reason to do it again. Cause I already did it. Um, I did get top eight again later, but we'll talk about that. Just so you know, I mean, I did get another, yeah, yeah, through yeah, the end one. Ollie, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I did get another yeah. Evo top eight. We'll talk about that though. But, um, so competing, kind of the fire was was diminishing and the passion for the content creation was rising. You know, I wanted to see how can we make better content? How can we bring in more people into this, right? Was the um, was the content community at this point growing as well? I feel like during this uh, time it was starting to become a little bit So, right. So at this point like let's talk about like let's let's skip a, a two years where I'm like 29, right? Yeah. 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 Um at this point 29 what was that three years ago? 2013? Yeah. Let me go by year. So 2013, yeah, that was the worst year. But 2013 was a bad year. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, what was bad about oh, it? Man, everything was bad. Uh, what was bad? I lost my uncle that year. Uh, the relationship was going bad that year. Life was happening that yeah, year. Yeah, you know, I got, I got told 
I got told, uh, you know, you're, you're not where I thought we would be. You know, the person that you think is it, like, you know, oh, not where wow. I thought we'd be. So yeah. just want and then I, when I'm hearing that, I'm like, I'm not even mad because it's like, I get it. Like, yeah, I'm doing this. I'm not winning. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm not getting that two, that $2,000 first place prize. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing career wise. What am I going to do with this major? And this is like after, like, this is after all that. Yeah. yeah. And this is, uh, you're saying your relationship with your girl? Yeah. Yeah. And, so it's like everything was just kind yeah. of falling apart. You know, yeah. lost that. And then at this time, we were, leaving our home <laughs> so uh ah man that was bad it was just it was just it was i you know what it what motivated me though is i never really complained about it then yeah because i'm always telling myself man somebody's got it worse <laughs> yeah. somebody's always has it worse so i'm not going to complain about what might seem like the end of the world to me somebody else can look at it and be like that's petty <laughs> I, I remember I, it might have been during that time mm -hmm. I remember maybe a little later but mm -hmm. mike posted a, a very funny series like on instagram about the struggle being real was it during that time or, or did it so, come a little after so when i was posting all that that was to cheer me up <laughs> mike what, he posted still the fun one of the funniest pictures i've ever seen one day it was like in the summer and he took a picture of the temperature and the temperature said 90 degrees in his house it was like 92 or 94 in the house. Yeah, in the house. <laughs> oh and then he, he goes, the struggle is real. And the very next day, so say it was like 94 degrees that day, the very next day he takes the same picture and it says 93 <laughs> degrees. And he goes, thank you, struggle gods, for having mercy on me. <laughs> I'm gonna get a one no degree, <laughs> one degree cooler. <laughs> we had no AC in the house. We had no, no AC. AC. In the house. You know? Thank you for having mercy on me today. <laughs> Struggle, God. So, so what I would do, yeah, during that time is I would find things that obviously weren't like even that bad, <laughs> like that, you know. And that's when I would pay attention to the struggle mm. because I didn't want to think about this other stuff, yeah. you know, that was going on. Um, my brother can recall stories. He would love to tell you about that when he saw me in my room, my hands on my head. I'm just thinking, like, man, I messed up everything. Like, why did I? Why did I do gaming? This is terrible. Like, there's nothing in this. There's oh, you, hit, in you hit like a rock oh, bottom. Oh, oh my gosh, it was so bad. Can we go um, in there though? Like, because I feel like yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. You well, don't. A, no, you, a new show also hit a rock bottom. Yeah. That's why I want to get into mm -hmm. it. I mean, because, he, he, he can get into it. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, bro, like for me, it was crazy because, like. I, you know, my my rock bottom happened in what, 2014, mm. uh, October, November time. Yes, right? same and same then, months for me in 2013. Yeah, so like, <laughs> but but you know, for me it was it, it's crazy because like you know I was just so stifled based on my perception of how everybody perceived me, and I was I was always the rock for everybody, and like. You know, I'd walk into rooms and everybody would be like, oh, no, she, like, you're always so positive and fucking, like, you always, you know, fix everything, this, that, and the other. But, like, what they didn't realize is I'm going into spots and I'm, like, crying inside, but I got to have a smile on my face because I'm positive fucking no, she, all this type of shit, right? But the, different, the, the, the thing for me was is that, you know, I had the skill set of a, of a beast, but, like, I was always staying in my comfort zone of, like, getting by it. But... Rock, the reason why I want to get into it is because rock bottom for me, and I feel like for a lot of different people, yeah. is to be able to come back from mm -hmm. the bottom. Yeah, It doesn't necessarily have to be like, I hit bottom and then I fucking got to Mount Everest. Yeah. Right? Hitting bottom makes any bounce back like special. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like being able to... like. There's such like being able to be vulnerable about what the bottom is. I feel mm -hmm. like it's so cathartic to some people because so many people are going through similar things yeah. in that realm, mm -hmm. but we all have a feeling that we have to upkeep a certain yes. image. Correct. But the moment that I was able to speak about hitting that bottom, even to my peers that like I never wanted to let them know the extent of mm -hmm. it, but being able to say it openly like it just allows so much more open communication. Yeah. And and you just start to realize like damn like I went through that too. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I want to kind of get into that bottom, yeah. instead of just brushing over it, is because we've I feel like we've all hit that. Yeah. And like, unless if everything's going good, great for you. But like, mm -hmm. there's so many yeah. people, even amongst their closest friends, mm -hmm. that they don't want to let know that that's happening. Because we're thinking that everybody else is hunky dory, and I got to keep this front. Correct. 
When yeah. bottom, re- like, it's, it's crazy how, you know, sometimes we think the worst things that happen in our lives are going to break us, mm-hmm. but they end up being the thing that make us. So this, this yeah, let's so, that. okay, all right. So, you know, it's, it's 2013. Mm. Uh, it's towards the end of the year, like around that October time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, October, November. Um, a, I had already stopped doing videos with Gutex for a while. Okay. It had been almost a year now where we stopped doing stuff together. He kind of did his thing. I did my thing, whatever. You know, it just happens, right? Yeah. Um, you burn out a little bit? You, get, you definitely get burned out. Word. Um, you definitely have differences, you know, altercations. Um you know, I, I try to do videos with some stuff, and the videos, they were still good. You know, I'm not going to lie. They still got, like, pretty good viewership. It was hitting, like, 50,000 on, on my stuff. But they didn't feel the same? I mean, it's not even about that. Okay. It's, it's, it, it, it still was fun to do. I'm always going to enjoy doing videos. I don't care, like, no matter what. I'm just going to want to do videos forever. We'll get yeah. to that. But, like, you know, he, he things just weren't happening. I wasn't really competing. Um, there wasn't... There was the phone call stopped coming in, right? That's what they say, yeah. right? The phone call stopped coming in, so all the opportunities were gone. Gotcha. You know, I was I was down to uh eventually it would get down to my last couple hundred bucks, you know, and I was like, yeah. ah, well after this, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is gonna be it. <laughs> you know, uh, I had like some horrible thoughts. And one thing that happened was me and Gutex, we we called each other, whatever. He hit me up and he's like, Hey man, let's just grab lunch. He, he's like, Well, first off, he's like, How are you feeling? I was like, oh, I'm about to jump. How about you? He's like, wow. He said, He said, Don't jump until I get there with you. Wow. <laughs> you know? Beautiful. Um, yeah. So then, um, so we just, we met up, we had lunch, we talked a lot, you know, hashed out so many things. You know, that's, you know, you never abandon your brothers <laughs> at yeah. the end of the day. Um, so we had a good talk and we're just like, Man, you know, well, before we do that, let's 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 figure out some a real plan on how to. We're both how to y'all co- like at similar points. We're in at your the lives? same point without talking, Got without it. really knowing it. I mean, it's Got not it. like we weren't talking. Like yeah. it was never like that. Like right. well, no, we're not talking. It's just like just dudes kind of yeah. kind of veered off yeah. in different directions for a bit, you know. Um, and it was cool. It was fun. Like you need to do these things. Yeah. You need to veer off. You need to see life what you can happens. Do. Right? Yeah, life happens. Yeah. So when this happens, but we know what's more important at the end of the day, and that's the vision we shared when we first did that podcast together. Mm-hmm. You know, so that kind of all circled back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're like, all right, well, let's come back. Let's figure out a way to do this correctly. We'll put out the video content, right? You know, if if people want to support us and see us to continue to do this, awesome. If they can't, if they don't have money and they can't support us financially. Oh well, we'll put it out there for free anyways. Word. Give them the option, you know. But like we, you know, let's just try this. Let's see if this works. So we revamped Excellent Adventures, or the YouTube stuff we did. We we came up with a new model on how to distribute it. Um, I'll tell you what's interesting is, it was December when we were at each other's house, and we took one photo together. Now, nobody has seen us in a photo together in like probably a year. We took one photo together, saying, "Up, oh, about to start up something Ooh. good this year," you know. <laughs> And after that Instagram posted, we got contacted by two companies. I said, Hey, we want to like buy that content. <laughs> if you guys are really coming back, like, Oh my God, that's crazy. Really? You know, gaming companies are like, you, you like, if you guys are really doing it, have it on us, have it on our network <laughs> or something like that. And we're like looking at each other mad. Like, is this all we needed to do? <laughs> you know, like take a picture on Instagram. No, man, that's that's a jump. But yeah. Like, yeah, 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 exactly. You're like, is this it? Is this all they the wanted? The phone call yeah. came in yeah, yeah, yeah. after this? Yeah, exactly. A fucking picture? Yeah. So uh <laughs> so um yeah, right before that we we called up the old gang, the third member, Steve, the guy that did focus, is a guy who shoots and edits all of our excellent adventure stuff. Awesome. Um so yeah, we just started that. Um, and we, we shot a video, had it edited, put out a test run or put it, put out a test on Christmas or something, release it to everybody. And we saw how many people supported us and we're like, <laughs> one, on. yeah, <laughs> we're like, okay, this is, this is what we're going to do. And we can't stop this. And, and we're going to keep catering to our people. Nice. What, and what was the premise behind it this time around? Was it the it, same, uh, watch people play a video? Cause I know you guys, yeah. you have, same- same thing. Yeah, and yeah. what's cool is that you actually challenge people to play you guys. Yeah. So like, someone's like, "Oh, I want to play Mike Ross." Like, 
That's pretty fun. Yeah. And, and there's especially, a way you can. If, especially if they beat you. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. Then, you know, if they beat me, more power to them. Now people know them. You know, they can they got a little buzz on their social network. Yeah, I beat them. Yeah. And look at the video, yeah. you know, and but they can show it. Yeah. But you're in a different you're, space now to, yeah. to even allow that to happen. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and versus the competitive, fearless mic that would just like. Uh, I mean, well, I'm sure you still get a little pissed. Well, see, I, so I, can, I, can, I can touch on that. Let me, let me be real. To this day, we're shooting these videos. I never want to lose. I hate losing. For sure. I'm, I'm not able to compete anymore because I work for uh, Twitch, and we work directly with this league. So this whole Capcom Street Fighter League right now, I can't enter those tournaments. Rightfully so, because I work so closely with it. Uh, and they just don't want to make sure that, hey, he might won. He must have rigged it because he of works course. with them. So whatever. How, however, I still practice gotcha. <laughs> because of the fact that, you know, I, I bring on a lot of good players. I'm like I have a weekly show as well where I interview like top players. I bring them on. I might play them. I can't be bad. Yeah. You know, I got to make sure that I can still hold it yeah. down. You can't so, be the old timer that's like, well, right. it was great yeah. when exactly. it lasted yeah. in, in yeah. 09. Yeah. When see, I- <laughs> see, and that's what separates us from like sports. You know, you can get uh, Kenny Smith. You know, talking about basketball, you know, he might be able to bring on uh, Curry right now. He ain't going to be able to no. uh, hang with him no, in one-on-one. No, 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 no. But, I mean, I could be gray hair, great beard, bring it on. All right, you young whippersnapper. You. <laughs> and then I'll, like, get on the sticks and I'll still serve him up, though, that's right? That's right. That's right. You know? So that's something that would be a new dynamic that people aren't used to seeing. Got it's like you. It's really the gray hairs beating, you know, the, the young kids. Right? Yeah. So but how do you feel, like, not being a, a, a competitor directly like you were now seeing how big yeah. this has gotten like and, and it's i mean fucking huge it is massive i mean now obviously with street fighter 5 2 but it's like the street fighter itself is is massive yes um video game world mm-hmm. is massive mm-hmm. now even twitch brought a, a platform mm-hmm. where i mean i remember where you uh you hosted um the live stream, the the competition. Mm-hmm. Um, what was it at the? Uh, what venue was it at uh, in San Fran? Um, the the, the Fillmore? Foundry. Or the Foundry. Uh, the, are you talking about the? It was a, it was a tournament. It was like a live stream, and there was like two hundred thousand views on it. Jeez. Oh, the Daigo Lupe fiasco one. No. Uh, a couple uh, of years that shit ago. was lit. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Know, I did a. There was a. I'm not sure exactly. Oh, maybe it was that one. Yeah, it might maybe have been. Because that one got. Oh, yeah. And then there's. And then yeah. Not to mention like you, CV Aoki, challenging. Yeah. You like this is penetrating now pop culture, yeah. which it really wasn't. Every. I mean, everyone. Yeah. There was. A, look. There was a Street Fighter movie with Van Damme playing exactly. guy. Like let's like. Everybody okay. knows the brand. Yeah, yeah. It was, but. So I can't say now it's penetrating culture, Correct. but. Um, now it's just a much bigger culture. Yeah. A like. much bigger culture. We're so connected now, right? Yeah. Like people are playing online with each other. Yeah. I think the online. Yeah. Day, you, you had to go to the arcade. Yeah, correct. So now what must that just, be like to know yeah. that, like, man, I I was in it during that. So I guess we can go back to like these questions. I got to jump around. Topic, jump around. Jump around time. Jump periods, up. Right? Jump up and get down. <laughs> so also around 2013 during that point, and I was talking to somebody else. His name is James Chen. He's a commentator for a lot of street fighter events and he is a man of seniority he was here way before i was i used to look up to him you know when i was 17 gotcha. because there would be people that put out combo videos and would explain how to do them and he was one of those guys yeah Got it. so i'm like oh man this guy is so knowledgeable he's a legend and he is uh, i think he's almost 40 now okay and he was telling me you know in 2013 you know mike somebody's got to be a martyr <laughs> Wow. Somebody's got to do it. You know, I don't. So I haven't told anybody too. that. I haven't told anybody that until now. Wow. That this fool told me that. He'll back up and he'll say that. And then, you know, I'm thinking about it and I'm going back and I'm looking at everything. And I remember the conversation I told my brother in 2011 when I'm like, dude, this scene is going to get so big. It's going to blow up, but it's not going to be for me. <laughs> you know what I'm telling them that? I'm like, these players coming up, they're going to be the ones getting all of the, you know, the big sponsorships, the big payouts, the brand recognition and everything. Didn't know what that meant then. 2013, 2014, after I hit my low point, after we started doing the videos, after things start coming on the up and up, the passion came back, but not for the competition. Mm. Now it's for the scene growth. Because mm. I realized what needs what needed to happen is what I started out with when I did that first interview. So these people need to know who plays this now. 
Yeah. You know, they see somebody like Lupe playing. They saw Steve Aoki playing. They're like, oh, so this is who's playing this game? My passion now is to make sure that people know who's continuing to play this. Not necessarily these guys, gotcha. but the actual community players. Yeah. You know, they need to know. The global community. The global. They need to know that, like, the best, <coughs> the best player, you know, in California is this brother from Compton. You know, like, he's the number one Zangief player on the planet. What? That is crazy. That's fucking wild. That is crazy. That you know, and, crazy. like, these people need to know these people. And that's, that's where my passion comes in. So when I see all of these bigger sponsors coming in, throwing all this big money, great. Good for them. Because when I was at the lowest, I know where the worst it goes. I'll be homeless on the streets, right? That's it. That's what everybody doesn't want. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> like, right. I'm okay with that. I'm right. okay with that if I tried and made sure that this scene gets to where it needs to be. Got it. You know, so uh, that's kind of what got me. I don't know. You know, everybody has their own thing. What gets them out of the slump. Um, what it took for me was getting some a small sliver of opportunity and now looking back, seeing where the lowest point is, I'm okay to go back as long as I keep doing this because this is all I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Like, I've made that conscious decision. That's fucking epic, <laughs> Yeah, I made that conscious decision. And so now you're, it's, it's so amazing. So good for, them. so good amazing. for them. Good for them. Good for the next generation that's getting paid out. I'm happy to see that. And all of those guys, if they need mentorship, now that I'm on the other side with the big businesses and the companies, you guys need help knowing how to talk to them, I will gladly help. Yeah. I have helped a lot of players get sponsorships. I have helped talk with major companies. Um, I got a lot coming out. How does that make you feel, though? Because, like, going back again... It, it, like one of the common threads that I see, and, mm -hmm. and this, is, this is awesome to, to meet you in this light, because like we, yeah. you know, we haven't known each other yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, but what I hear from your story, and like what, like kind of like, I gravitate towards is is initially your love of the community, mm -hmm. right? Initially your passion for the game and mm -hmm. a competitive spirit, mm -hmm. and also the you know the beauty and the brilliance in. This community, the outside world saw nerds, yeah. but you saw yep. like, you saw brothers in arms, yep. right? So for you, it wasn't like this goal of like, I'm going to be the best and I'm going to make so much money. Mm -hmm. For you, it's always kind of been this goal of like, I want to be amongst the best, yes. but like, I also want to showcase who we are. Yes. I want to be able to give voice and, and, and imagery to who this community is because right. you don't know it yet. Now going through life you get to points where access and different like mediums are evolving and all that like you're okay with not having the big money player hmm. uh you know plays and the big money player dreams where you're getting sponsorship money thrown mm -hmm. at you and you're joining a huge team that's going playing tournaments for 250 300,000 dollars right but what you are continuing to do is elevate mm. the exposure Absolutely. and the experience yeah. of this community Absolutely. Yeah, that's, uh, to me, I mean, that's, that's just what it's about, <laughs> right? That's just what it's about. Screw the money. The money will show up. <laughs> you know, I've learned that. I learned what it's like to get paid decently and then to lose it all. Yeah. yeah. I lost it all in 2013, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then, uh, you know, regardless of how I'm doing right now, I might be doing fine, right? I'm, you know, I can't complain, but it might all go away, <laughs> you know, in a few months from now. So what am I going to let, like, bring me down the fact that I lost that? Or do I still have opportunities to, like, elevate and, and grow this community? And that's just, ah. Just, now that's where the just, fire's coming in. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's, that's fascinating, yeah. man. It's, that's fucking it, epic. It's, that's great to, it, it's so great to hear mm -hmm. that because, like, it's a true evolution of your journey. But yeah. it's almost coming full circle of, mm -hmm. of going back to this platform, this media platform, mm -hmm. uh, which, the you know, again, something like Excellent Adventure is, like, the YouTube and web series, it's not really even a web series, right. but it's, um, it's just a channel. It's just a weekly, yeah. It's a yeah. channel. It's a, it's weekly episodic content where people will know when it comes out every Sunday, you mm -hmm. can guarantee there's going to be a new episode. So it's just kind of like instilling it in. Let, let, it lets the community know there is content that will exist for you. Gotcha. But every it's week. getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, it is. You know, so not, look I'm just saying that, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that way of consuming media. Mm -hmm. Um, is getting bigger. Yes. I mean, where you stand now, even as a figure in mm -hmm. this industry, because um, it is a very much an industry, yeah. um, has changed. You know, you have the credibility. Uh, you are a brand. You know, you, you have the expertise. Mm -hmm. And you have the platform. There's so much more to do uh, 
that you can be, you know, to impact this right. more now with these different medians at a different level than just being a competitor mm-hmm. or a known competitor mm-hmm. um, and bring it together on a much larger scale. What would your kind of like, I don't want to say advice, but like, what, <laughs> would, you, what would you tell mm-hmm. the younger generation that's mm-hmm. coming up in this game? Because obviously the landscape switches up and like, you know, kids are getting really good way younger yeah. than you had the opportunity. Of course. To. Yeah. Um, but knowing this path, knowing and also being an elder and an authority figure mm-hmm. in, in this industry, but also seeing like the unlimited advance and unlimited growth that it, it, it can take given this world that's being built now and also technology and access. What actually, no, fuck advice, but like, what do you want to see from this world, this community? Like, what, what, what would it be like for you to be like, you know, all of you guys in this community, all you guys all mean something, but what, what would you want to impart on the community to like see it evolve into? Ooh, that's <laughs> I can answer that two ways because there's. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm kidding. Man. Okay. Um, ultimately, what I want to see is people that get looked up to. That's really it at the end of the day. Um, For what? I want, I, want, I want there to be kids out there to look at people that they can look up to. Okay. Meaning like when I was a kid, yeah. I looked up to Tony Hawk. Gotcha. You know? At the time, what was he doing? Dude was having fun on a skateboard. Yeah. Dude liked to do tricks. He wasn't trying to... Um, you know, whether he was getting paid off of it, yeah. he didn't do it because he was trying to get paid off of yeah. it. He wasn't you know, trying he to change the fucking it. world. He was just... He was, right. Yeah. I want to see a time when kids are looking up to what we do, our gaming people. Word. They're going to see guys like, you know, that are now wearing jackets with logos on them. These guys, yeah, like, yeah, this guy plays, he's, he, he makes like three million a year, you know, like doing this, you know? I want to see that. I want to see us, like, I want to go into a bar I want to go into BJ's and I want to, I want to see on the TV screens. It's not, you know, the, the standard that's, that's there now is I want to see that people are turning it on and they're going to say, huh, I wonder how, how, you know, how he's doing it. I wonder if he's going to use Ken this week. You wow. know, I want the, I want that to be the conversations. Yeah. I'm asking for a lot. I know that. Yeah. And I know it sounds crazy, but I've seen it go from a hundred people to 15,000. Yeah. I mean, bro, even think of poker. Yeah. Yeah. Like, who would have ever thought the fucking, like, poker yeah. would be on TVs like that? Now, Why, why is poker on there? Tour. Why is poker on TV? I don't know. There's two reasons why poker's Talk on to TV. Me. Poker's on TV, one, because to get anybody's attention in America, they need to know that there's, there, there's a success mm. behind, right? Because that's what we sold, the dream. Yeah. So you see these poker guys, and you say, you don't know what's going on. There's a million dollars on this hand, right? That's yeah. what they're seeing. They see the money first. Yeah. And then once they see the money, then you have to introduce the people. Yeah. What we need to do is kind of follow that same model, gotcha. and it's starting to happen. People are starting to pay more attention now that they know that Kazunoko from Japan won a, or uh, sorry, Momochi. Like, no, sorry, geez, I got the names mixed up. Kazunoko from Japan won one tournament last year and got a hundred twenty thousand dollar payday. That's awesome. Let us know more about him. That's yeah. what they want to know next. You know, once they know the money is there, they need to know who. Yeah, yeah. We are working on the money. I've always been working on the who. Once I get out there, that's when the scene is just going to explode. Awesome. So going to the success point, yeah. people want to see success. Yes. What, what do you, what's your perspective on success for you? Mm. Uh, for me, like, it's, do you feel, do you feel uh, successful? I don't know. Uh, I feel like I'm doing okay. Uh, it's like, I mean, yeah. we, we asked this question to, mm-hmm. to all the guests. It's like, you know, how do you measure your own success? You know, um, because you say you're doing okay. Mm-hmm. You were top eight at <laughs> Evo multiple times. Yeah. 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 You are a champion, yeah. bro. Yeah. <laughs> you are. A, yeah. People look I'll up to you. Slap you like the f- the first fans of his. You had, bro. <laughs> you you had. Like, I may jump man, on the table. You me? <laughs> you have. You have fans. Yeah. You you know. Yeah. Uh, you, you have you, a you voice. Put, you have yeah. a voice. You are an authority in this in this mm-hmm. gaming world that you saw grow from nothing yeah. to something. Mm-hmm. You got told by a gangster that you suck. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
it's hard for me to to sit across and hear that you're okay, mm-hmm. you know. But that's just my perspective, yeah. and I and I respect that. Mm-hmm. I totally do because maybe today that's how you feel yeah. versus right. how you felt, you know, three four years ago. Right. But how do you measure the success of of uh, of your journey? And and you know, we talk about this too. It's not a, there is no end goal to this, yeah. right? It is an evolution. It's a constant evolution. Yeah. Sometimes it is that fantasy of that, yeah. you know, large life getting thrown and having a per diem, right, getting, yeah. getting flown to, a, you know, another state, having right. a per diem and, and having that moment. So maybe yeah. that's it. But like you said, those things fade away and fizzle. So right. how do you measure the success of what you're doing I, in, a, in a life sense? I can definitely answer that by saying I measure it based on how the people around me are doing. Mm. I value that like, you know, I can, even, I can easily say I value it more than myself. Especially if, if I had something to do with helping that. Yeah. Right? Like I've I've known players, you know, they might be from the slums of New York. They've been playing forever. I have an opportunity to get these guys flown out to Germany, you know, or something, have them live like kings for a weekend. That's success. Yeah. yeah. That to me is success. So I which has happened. You know, like these are things that have happened. Like when those moments happen and when people <clears throat> these guys come to me and they're like, Mike Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that to me is the success. It's That's not awesome. financial. It's not, you know, where we're at. Um, so, I mean, like, there's events that are coming up um, that some people might measure as success. I think it's a big milestone for me. I'm super appreciative of it. But I want to know what happens after that. For example, this year, biggest tournament of the year, Evo. Uh, we estimate a couple hundred thousand people are going to be watching this time around live, you know. Um, but the big thing is, is I'm going to be finally, I'm commentating the, the finals, top eight. I'm commentating top eight on ESPN this year. That's fucking wild. So it's like, the scene is growing. This year, people are going to be at that bar. They're going to be at BJ's. They're going to have the game on, right? And then when 7 p.m. hits... That channel is just naturally going to change to something they've never seen before. Fucking video games. They're going to see these this clown up there. Like they're going to be like, "What are we watching? We had it on, you know, NHL. It was hockey. Like, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> yeah. Do you know? That's how, fucking epic. Do you know how hype this? This could be something. How hype are you? I'm. I'm like. I'm in Zen right now. <laughs> like I'm Word. just like, you know. But but, but look once, how far you've come. Hey, it's still got a long way to go. Yeah, but look how <laughs> far know, yeah. the community has come. Yes, yeah, exactly. It went, it went from quarters to fucking ESPN. Yes, something that, and you'll catch me in documentaries from seven years ago saying that this should be on ESPN. That's fucking saying epic. Saying that, like, what is, why do we have the spelling bee on there? Like, you know, I'm just sorry. I'm sorry to the parents out there <laughs> yeah. who put your kids through the spelling bee. I'm really sorry about that. I'm really sorry. But no, <laughs> like, this is competition. <laughs> that's Anyways. absolutely man i love that man hey, that's incredible <laughs> yeah i'm sorry I, I, like you guys this, no, this conversation is, you guys are getting me pumped up. I know, this, this, this is what it's all about this phenomenal bro yeah. that's it, it's what it's all about yeah. um Mushi? i just want there's one one last thing that i really want to like capture um uh what's the importance of family to you in all of this because and this is like that come around but also like that like you know, watching that documentary, you know, uh, seeing your brother, yeah. who I don't know, seeing your pops, who like, yeah, look like such a jovial, but you could tell like yeah. he has so much charisma, mm-hmm. character. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I literally have this the, the the fucking picture in my head ingrained of your pops, like when y'all were younger playing baseball, like yeah. he's over there swolled out in his fucking like <laughs> uniform with his glasses, yeah. on, his, like super thug. Yeah. Um, you know, and and your mother being mm-hmm. a, a staple in your life, mm-hmm. and you know the whole family aspect. Like, yeah. how important was that to you? Because the reason I ask is that you've gone through all of these swings. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, your mother was the first one to really like be like, "You should join this tournament. Yeah. I'm gonna rent you every single fucking game yeah. that's gonna be in this tournament." Yeah. And that kind of set it off. Yep. Um, and she doesn't even your know. Your father, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Your father yeah. being supportive of, yeah. of, of you just wanting to be great, you and your brother wanting to be great yeah. at whatever you did. Whatever it is, get it. Like, there was no moment in, in, in time in which you've spoken about openly where, you know, mm-hmm. 
your parents at any point are like, look, just hang it up and then, you yeah. know, hang it up and then, you know, come back to it. it it's always become, be the best you can be and it'll yeah. come. So actually to even touch on that, well, first off, I'll just say like in terms of the importance of family to me, it's a hundred percent everything. Word. That is literally the most important thing to me. Word. Um, you know, without them, I am nothing. Yeah. In my, in my mind. And it kind of shows because yeah. like, just like alluding to the fact of like how strongly you feel about building this community. Yeah. Right. You can yeah. tell that like it has something to do, but I just wanted yeah. to, I really want to touch on that and its importance because there's a reason why mm -hmm. you are the way, like, I feel like, you know, in looking at it to me, it's like you're a father figure to like this, this, this community, you know what I mean? Or a big brother figure to this community. There's mm -hmm. father figures that right. you've looked up to. And yeah. there's like older uncles that you've looked right, up right, to. Right, right, right. Um, but, you know, <laughs> I see your love for the community and yeah. like, you know, it goes back to like, okay, like, where, where did this start? So, I'll tell you what's funny, uh, just real quick about the support. My dad in 2013, when I was at like the lowest of lows. Yeah. Um, early 2013. Uh, I said, there's nothing coming from this. You know, and in my head, I didn't want to be a failure. Yeah. I didn't want to be homeless on the streets. I needed anything. I got an opportunity to work for the Orange County uh, Police Department to be a dispatcher. And, you know, it was going to pay decent money. Yeah. You know, I had me a nice, so I'll say a nice 40K, 50K yeah. a year job. You know, I would have been good. And I was, I wanted to take it so bad, not because I wanted to do the work, just because I needed something. Yeah. And my dad told me no. That's wow. Mm -hmm. He said, nope. He said, I'm not going to let you do this. Epic. He said, I'm not going to let you do this. You keep keep at what you're doing. Wow. Beautiful. I yelled at him. I said, I am not making any money. Like, <laughs> no, I cannot do this. It was a bad, but he was just like, nope, that's, you're not a dispatcher. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Wild. You know? Yeah. So, and of course. I couldn't picture you as a dispatcher. Yeah. Right, All right now, stop freaking out. Wait, what's going right, on? Yeah, exactly. Wait, blood's coming where? You said, what? Uh, no, we got him coming. Hold on. Somebody, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> calm the fuck down. So you get a, yeah. the lady's not listening. Yeah. Shut the fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm gonna be the one panicking. Somebody me? shot. Hell, yeah. I'm gonna be the one panicking. But uh, so, so yeah. So I mean, the support there, like that's the thing. Like that's that's my rooting. My family is mm. it's too important. Um, I could lose everything tomorrow, but I'll still always have them, and they'll uh, always know who I was and where I came from. So if I lost it, they know, you know, they know everything. They won't how see important me as is, How important was that? Because, like, that's crazy. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, just for the support. Yeah. yeah. Because it, it's very hard, I could yeah. imagine, yeah. supporting your child or supporting your yeah. brother as a gamer yeah. for a career. You right. think, like, doctor, lawyer, right. Right, right, businessman, right. But finance. Even, but even right. for, even for yeah, like, a, a father or a mother to be, like, because all they really want for, for their seeds, right, mm -hmm. as, as parents, is for their children to be okay. Yeah. yeah. So you could look at parents are like, you know, they don't want you to be million. If you're a millionaire, whatever, what have you, that's you. But, like, yeah. as long as you're independent and yeah. you're good and you're mm -hmm. eating that's and it. you're healthy, that's it. Yep. But for it, what, what tripped me out is, like, for a father of yours that wanted mm -hmm. that for you, mm -hmm. To be able to still say, because like, I, I, I'm damn near positive, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. is if your dad was like, son, you know, I get it. You know what? Just take the, just take the dispatcher thing and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. Like He could have even said, take that and then see where it goes. <laughs> but he yeah. was like, no. Yeah. Don't go towards stability. Yep. There's something else yep. within you. Yeah. For him to have that foresight of saying, look, I yeah. get it. You're scared. Him, him not letting you know how scared he was about that, but I know damn well, probably within him, he's like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Better, yeah. Something yeah. better fucking hit yeah. right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he's too good. I've seen my son kick yeah. ass when he was fucking like yeah. eight years old against yeah. high schoolers. Like, it's yeah. come this way. Yeah. Like, the father knows like something's going to give. Mm -hmm. But to have that ability to, to be like, no, yeah. keep going. Yeah. Cause like I feel like the, there's a certain point where like it's like fuck like if you were at a point where you were like doubting your own belief and then oh that was done to have a father figure someone that like you look up to one of the most prominent mm -hmm. figures in your life mm -hmm. saying keep going mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like even when even when you look yourself in the mirror and say I have nothing left for right. like yeah. for you to look at your dad and be yeah. like fuck you still see something yeah well, like I gotta like muster some shit up yeah 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 so like I mean. 
words honestly can't describe how much that meant to me. Yeah. I should say how much it means to me now. Because how much it meant to me then, I was mad because I'm like, you know, you don't see it like I see it. I've been in this for over a decade. Yeah. Mm. I'm seeing the future and it's not for me. Wow. <laughs> you know, and then he's over there just like, nope, you'll be, you'll be fine. It'll work out. <laughs> okay. And I mean, you know, listen to him. Now, I'm, you know, I got hired by Twitch. Uh, easily, I can say it's like the best company in the world to work for. That's not a shameless plug or promotion. I'm just being awesome. honest. The people awesome. there take really good care of me. Awesome. Um, and now, seeing where I once was, never afraid to go back. Mm. That's great. So if, I, if, if it all mm. goes away tomorrow, I'm not afraid to start back from ground zero. Word. Yeah. Powerful. Oh, man. Mike. This is incredible. Mike. Incredible. Mama! So, Mike. Yes, sir. <laughs> we'll get the shout. We'll get the shout. <laughs> where, 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 can, where, can, where can people find you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at that Mike Ross guy. Uh, you can also. That's uh, M I K E. Yeah. M I K E R O S S guy, G U Y, and the word that, T H A T in front, that Mike Ross guy. Uh, same, and on Instagram, I believe it is Mr. Mike Ross. Uh, also, the YouTube channel is where it you, MR or is it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, thank you for the clarification. I'm over here just like MR. So sorry. Yeah, that's MR. MR, M I K E R O S S. On the YouTube channel is uh, Cross Counter TV. That's just Spelled TV, out, not T E E V E E. Yeah, yeah that's uh, Cross Counter yeah. TV. Um, Twitch.tv slash Mike Ross. Probably the easiest one to remember. Um, yeah. Yeah, you just. Follow one of those. Just follow on Twitter. You'll awesome. get more information. Just Google Mike Ross. Yeah. 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 E Honda. <laughs> Street Fighter. E Honda. There you go. There you go. All right. <laughs> and please, you know, check out the documentary Focus. Um, it, it's a great, on great. G4. Yeah, oh, yeah. On G4. Yeah. On G4. Right. G4 picked it up. Uh, That's right. I, yeah. yeah. Great documentary on the journey um, <laughs> and gives you good insight to, to Mike and, uh, and how he does his hair. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, Mike, no, thank you, my man. Dude. Thank you so much, bro. This has been incredible. Yes. My man, for real. love you so much. Thank, thank you for you coming on. Shout out to John Ross and the whole Ross family. I love hey. you guys. <laughs> Mama, Mama, we made it!